they, they go. Okay. <clears throat> so. All right. So yeah, I put Skyward Sword in A tier. Skyward Sword in A tier. Yep. And I'm, um, I'm comfortable with where it is. Okay. So, uh, regarding Skyward Sword, I think we're going to have some different opinions about Skyward Sword. Okay. Um, I do not rank it up there with the top dogs. Really? I think, yeah. Okay. I I have a couple of qualms with this game. I think the primary qualm that I have is that this game... I... So my favorite... Oh, I gotta put your screen. Sure. So my favorite uh, location or region in any video game, including Zelda, is the forest area. I really like the look of forest area. I like the feel of the forest area. Yeah, it's not going to um, be good for you. And my least favorite yeah. location yeah. In, a Zelda, in any game, including a Zelda game, is the desert area. Okay. And this game had a lot of desert. Yeah, the desert and, was huge. And it did not have a lot of forest. It did not. And so I didn't like that. I I just this game I was sick of the Lanayru Desert. I was so I was sick of the um the mines, uh Lanayru mines. Mm -hmm. And then you have the uh you have the whole sand sea area. The best part of the Lanayru area was the part where you time shifted back into water. And I they, I like that part. Yeah, I love that yeah. part actually. Yeah. Um, and so I just did, and you had to revisit this area like on three different occasions. Yeah, I was like, like it's like three get, times. You have to go to get the Silent Realm stuff. You have to go to. The, I was so sick of this area. Of the of the Lanayru desert area, like I just I was so tired of looking at all that orange and yellow and mm -hmm. tan, yeah, um, and bare rock. I think I I love the lush green of the forest area, and I love water areas too. Um, I think they look really nice. I'm not talking about like you know graphics. I'm just they just think they're just on more pleasant areas to be in. Sure. Um, and so you know my favorite areas of all of these games are going to be forest areas. So, um, yeah, I just, I just didn't like the. Uh, I spent most of my time in Lanayru, uh, and it didn't help that the other area was Elden, and so like Elden has its own sandy spots too. There's a lot of you know where there's like a bare rock. There's no vegetation, right? You know, and I'm just like, come on, guys. I went from a sand, a, a, like sand and rock, to more sand and rock, and I just didn't like that. And so, um, and then you go to Skyloft as like, I don't know, four trees. <laughs> yeah, there are not it, a lot of trees in Skyloft. Right. And rightfully so, because Skyloft is, uh, well, it's in the sky and there's not a whole lot of room for, for trees. Um, trees, especially when you consider that it's the main center of population pretty much the sole center of population there's a right. couple of islands sky islands but for the most part it's the it's the only thing and so you had you kind of have to s subject that to urban development if you will right anyway long long story short uh there was not a lot of greenery in this game and i really really didn't like that um even wind waker has more greenery in stuff because there's several islands that have oh, lots yeah. of green oh yeah so you know and it's like wind waker is an ocean game so it is I just I didn't like that. I really didn't like it. I thought the items were mid. I you know the double claw shots were the best item. Actually, I take that back. I like the bow and arrow more because it honestly, had the, it had the. I think that bow was probably the best thing in the game. Yeah, the bow is it's it's the best bow that they ever made for a Zelda game because it I had agree. the zoom and it, you could adjust power levels and that was really nice. Yeah, it was really um, nice. But you know, and the double claw shots were all right. Fighting in this game. I... I like that they give you more like precision on where you put your blade. Sure. But a lot of it just turns into like Wiimote shake and spam, where you're just sure swinging. Sure. swinging. I don't do. I can you even do a combo in this game? Like I don't even know how to do a combo. I don't like, know. Sure, I understand <clears throat> that 
it's the fighting is more complex in this game than say for example tears of the kingdom or breath of the wild where all you're doing is pressing y over and over right. but to feel like a hero at least with those games on the switch like i can backflip and i can dodge and i can sure do all this stuff and okay it's true to say that i can you know side hop in this game wait can you side hop in this game yeah how do you side hop you just uh walk one direction left or right and then press a okay and he'll just jump that's right that's what i that's what i thought um it's the same way you did it in the uh, princess Twilight princess yeah um so you know but the the actual fighting it's like it's just let me just shake my stick at you and there's a lot of like moments where the game slows down when it feels like it should speed up. I'll give you a couple examples. Example number one, you're over here and you're using your sword and you have to hit an enemy for whatever reason, because you know maybe it's a weakness or whatever, but you have to hit an enemy by angling the sword up and charging up the blade. And then you can strike them with your sky strike or whatever. Okay. Like it takes so long to charge. It takes like, three or four seconds to charge up that thing yeah it and does. It, it combat just shuts down it just shuts down or if you're trying to do a goddess cube and you have to do that stuff or um another one is with the item uh the bug the little the little sky beetle, the beetle? thing that you yeah so i like the idea like that the you can i like the idea that you can take the sky beetle thingy and launch it off your wrist and you basically have a drone I, it, that's basically what it was. Was it was it was a drone. Yeah. I really like that, but I like one too. thing I didn't like about it is the way that you use the drone. Is number one, you can't it can't stop in place. It has to be continuously moving. Yeah. So if you jack up, you have to go all the way back to your wrist. Right. And yeah, you pretty that, much have to start over. And then you have to start over. Yeah. And you can't you can't move both link and the beetle at the same time. Right. So if you're trying to say work on a puzzle, you have to do one and then you have to do the other. You have to move the beetle and then you can move link. Yeah. I, and I would run into, they have, they made upgrades of, about the beetle where it's like, you know, you have like time upgrades where you can only be out for a certain, you know, you can extend how long it's out. I'm like, listen, just give me infinite time on the beetle. Like, uh, just like limit my range you know yeah uh, i understand that you don't want me to have a beetle on one side of skyloft and go to the other side of skyloft <laughs> i get that i get i get that's gonna have some loading issues but like especially back in the wii days it probably wouldn't have a loading issue now with modern hardware but you know if that was a concern that they had i get it i get it but like a time why are we doing this you know i just didn't like that and and so it just it just slowed stuff down to have to turn the beetle and you couldn't stop it. If you messed up, you had to restart over. And hey, maybe, maybe skill issue there. But I mean, like it just the UI for the beetle uh, needed improvement, I think. Um, and uh, and it was very fragile, a very fragile item. You get hit like with one thing. Right. And you're done. It gets hit once and is dead. Right, and because you can't stop or reverse, if you run into a wall, you're double tapping that wall, and you're going back to start. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's like bonk, yep. and then you keep, and then you move forward again. And I'm like, I don't want to move forward. I want to turn around and go to the the actual direction I want to go. And it's like you're going forward again, and you hit him again, and then you're like, okay, well, your health is over, and you're back to start. Right. And and then you have to do the puzzle again, or whatever you're trying to do. And um, it's just I just didn't have fun with it. So, uh. Yeah, but I do like the concept of having a drone. That is nice. But I just I think it could have been done better. Um, I think this game has a lot of great points. I think. Um, so we already talked about the final boss. Yeah. I want to actually highlight the first boss, which was Kira him. Um, yeah. He was I in my opinion he's the best first boss of any Zelda game. The idea that you get this introduction to a recurring enemy, a recurring antagonist, not just an enemy, but an antagonist. You get a recurring antagonist, introduction at the start. He's toying with you. I like the mechanic that he intercepts your sword with his fingers and catches it. Yeah. Instead of yeah. like letting you hit him. 
Yeah. And then you kind of have to fight him with that. Yeah, you have to pull I, it back. Yeah, you have to pull it back. And he, sometimes he takes your sword. And if he you does? don't do it right. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you like put your sword and he catches it and you don't take it out of your hand, he keeps the sword. He says, that's mine now. What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you're just standing there like a doofus because you don't have a sword anymore. I did not and, know that. And then he'll throw the sword back at you. And you have to go run and go collect it. You have to go what? Run it I've never yeah. had him take my sword before. Oh, dude, it was a recurring problem for me, bro. I never had him take my sword. That's crazy. Yeah. That's so... That's great. Yeah, he was a great first boss. Wow, I did not know that. I've also thought of several other points that I'd like to talk about, but keep going. Hello? Hello, I'm here. Okay. I'm just, uh, I'm just thinking. <laughs> okay. I'm, I, I hope I remembered that correctly. I hope I remembered that he actually took your sword and I didn't just make that up. Um, I hope he takes your I sword, hope I... dude. That would be awesome. Yeah. Either, well, regardless, I really like the mechanic where you're like, okay, if I can't hit you, like, the right way, how am I, like, I gotta think about this. Sure. I gotta, like, you know, one-up you and... Yeah, 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 basically yeah, yeah. basically you you beat him by feint f f e i n t where you feint your attack pretend you're going to attack from one direction but really attack from a different one yeah 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 um so that he blocks in one direction and then he's exposed in a different one that's kind of the yeah that's the whole the that's fight. the that's the, that's the whole fight yeah um you know not a bad not a bad gimmick not a bad fight no uh, I, so it was i think a good fight. i have legitimately yeah. beaten that fight in less than 10 seconds yes but also no, you've done saying. that yeah, but you've also done that as an adult, and yeah, 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 as, yeah. as a grown man, you know the trick. <laughs> so is that that's not really fair? <laughs> right. No, I'm just saying it's fun to body a boss in less than ten seconds. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not really fair to be like, oh, I've pl I fought this boss mo on more than one occasion. I know how the I know how the trick works, and it's not the same. You know, you can't really say that. Oh, I beat him in ten seconds. It's like that doesn't make him an easy boss. That just means you oh. know the trick. No, no, I'm just saying it was fun to body a boss in 10 seconds. I, I, oh, I haven't had another game where I've been able to body a boss in 10 seconds. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, That's not I true. think uh, One other game, but continue. I think the story of this game is really good. I like the concept that you're, um, you have to find the Triforce, that you're dealing with an ancient evil, that you're dealing with a... Well, I don't really know about the goddesses or about Skyloft or anything. I, I would have preferred that it were the three gods. Rather, rather than Hylia, yeah, but because that was like established lore, but it was you know, they added lore. That's how it is. Yeah, they added lore. They added lore. lore. In fact, they added lore that was not previously compatible, and they had to kind of like make it compatible. Right. Um, and uh, I liked that they used the Triforce at the end. I liked the ending dungeon where you had. I think that's a really good ending. The Sky dungeon. Keep? Yeah, Sky Keep, where you have several different areas of the game. And you are manipulating, or not areas of the game, but areas of the dungeon, and you're like manipulating where they are in relation to each other, so you can do passageways. And it all was that kind very of stuff. unique. I remember having, I remember the first time going in there, I had to have a pen and paper. Oh, did you really? Yeah, to figure out, you know, how am I going to get to this room? I have to move the these things in this exact order. I had a hard time in there. That uh, yeah. that being said, that kind of puzzle, I'm very bad at that kind of puzzle. My favorite dungeon in this game was the water dungeon, Ancient Cistern. I really liked... The Ancient Cistern the... was great. Yes, I really liked... Uh, I can't really remember the puzzles all that well, but I remember the, the atmosphere really well. I liked the music of the of the Ancient Cistern. Yeah. More importantly, I liked I li <laughs> what, I re what I really liked was the contrast. There was this... Hold on a second, my wife is talking to me. Okay. I really liked the whip from... Uh... That dungeon? I thought that was a great, great... Um... All right, I'm back. Oh, welcome back. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Ancient Cistern. I thought the the upper level, the main section of the dungeon, the, the really the dungeon part, where it's all gold and yellow and inlaid. Um, yeah. You know, I, I talked about earlier with the dungeons or with the desert stuff that I don't like the yellow of the desert. Yeah. I like the yellow of gold walls. <laughs> that is yeah. a different kind of yellow that I like. It is a different um, kind of yellow. And uh, I really liked that. I really liked that it was like pristine. But 
more than that, I liked the under you like the depths. of that dungeon. I liked the depths where there was these, you fight these enemies, you throw them, you kill them, and then you don't actually kill them that because game... they have like an infinite health, and so they just come back they up. They just get up, And yeah. they kind of, Dude, they attack you like zombies. That temple became a horror game for a second. It did. It, it did. did. So the reason I like that... Uh, uh oh where'd you get this oh it came to me in the mail oh that's great i i was uh gonna print this at the office but i uh i'm glad they mailed this thank you all right sorry uh my wife handed me some stuff um anyway uh i loved you know the golden lay of the shrine of the temple the ancient cistern it felt like lore wise this area felt like it was a place where people came to worship a deity that's what it felt like sure yeah um, i can see that and, and when you contrast that with the the horror game that was the basement of that dungeon <laughs> that was awesome i love the and it was so i really like the color purple in the way that they used the color purple it in was that really good area in really good really it was really, really good hammered home i like all the colors really but it really hammered home that this area was you're not supposed to be here dude you're just not supposed to be yeah it, in it's, this area yeah it, it, they did it very well yeah. i agree i and, agree and and that the fact that the the enemies were like not um that they were not killable yeah at least through normal means there might have been ways to kill them like throwing them off a ledge or, or getting them to fly off an edge really. yeah but apart from that, like you couldn't kill them, and that so they kind of made you rethink how to fight them, and I kind of I like that. Um, when you escape the underbelly and you go off to the back to the top, and you're climbing this Fantastic. rope, and there's these this huge horde of undead zombie bacoblins coming at you. Yep. Uh, what a scene! A really good, really, really good, good scene there. really yeah. good. Yeah. Like, so that's I really why they like should put the trailer. Sister. Yeah, they I did. really like Ancient Cistern. I really like uh, Skykeep, the final dungeon. I like the Triforce. I like the use of the Triforce. I really like the idea that, Me too. you know, Link gets the Triforce, and the way he uses it is he wishes uh, that Demise is, is destroyed. And I like that they play that out. They say, okay, you know, we've been hyping up this ancient magical relic for, I don't know, however many games are on this list, like 20 games. Sure. And 15 at the time that Skyward Sword was played, or nearly 15. I don't know how many exactly, but you know we've been hyping up this relic as like something that if you get this, you are powerful and you can you can wish things to be true. And we get to see that we they didn't nerf it. They said, okay, Link has this now. He wishes it, and boom, it's done. He gets his wish. Wish granted within like 15 minutes. It's it's granted, and uh, you get a whole cutscene about that, and that's really nice. Uh, and I like the way that they did it was they didn't just make Demise just like fall over dead. But like they showed you, let's make something in the world change that causes the wish to come true, which that is bring down a portion of of Skyloft. Skyloft. The statue. And that was a pretty epic moment, I would say. So yeah, there's was. a lot of Yeah, so there's a lot of positive things about this game. There's a lot of good things. But there's a lot of neg I really didn't okay, dude, like Part of Elden, I mentioned how there were things that slow down in this game. Part of it, another good example was when you're in the fire dungeon, the first fire dungeon. Yep. I don't remember. I don't remember the name of it, but you're in there, and you have bombs for the first time. That's like the dungeon item. Yeah. And you are uh, kind of playing basketball, Kobe with these bombs in order to <laughs> land them in these doors with basket hoops. Sure. And when they explode, the door falls over and becomes a platform for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, over. That's over to... in Lanner. Yeah. Oh, that's in Lanner. Yeah. 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 That's over in the lava and Lanner. Uh, no, no. Uh, in Lanner, it was quicksand. Oh, for some reason I thought that was lava in the Elden region. It might have been well, there too, but I don't remember. I don't remember that. I definitely remember the uh, sand, the quicksand in Elden. Well, and, uh, another reason I don't like the desert areas, I'll tell you that. Yeah, there you go. Um, but uh, you have to like, you have to basketball. You have to sit there and wait for the bomb to go off. 
Sure. Yeah, you do. The number of time, the number of times I played that game, and I had to wait, sit there waiting several seconds for the bomb. I mean, they, I, I appreciate they had a generous bomb timer, but it might have been a little too generous. <laughs> um, and uh, I was, it just slows the game down. Um, I so, will say though, go ahead. I never once had to buy bombs in that game. Well, you never needed to because. You had reloadable bombs. Exactly. You could just walk up to them, pick it up, put it in your pocket with it still. Yeah, honestly, honestly, what vendor is going to sell bombs if you have reloadable bombs? That so, one guy in Skyloft. Yeah, that guy really made me sad because every time you like turned around, walked away, he was like, oh. He would like put his head down and yeah. it's like, man, I don't need this kind of depression in my my Zelda game. <laughs> like, take, make everybody happy. Like, put. Can we make everybody like Beetle? You know, I first but... of all, Beatles in that game, so fantastic game already. Yeah. Um, I really liked how in while we're talking about the the bazaar area, how every person's shop had different music, and it was the same theme, just with different instruments. Yeah, I really liked that. I thought it was very very unique. Yeah, nice attention to detail. There. Yeah, it was very good. I liked. Yeah. I'm gonna start bringing up my points now. Um, okay, go ahead. I liked that. Uh, this game was the first one to, as far as I'm aware, have like upgrades for equipment that were. Like, I thought it was fine. That were like purchasable. Oh, you know what else this game had? Durability. Shield durability. Yes, that, that was, was so that, bad. I wish that never ha- had been a thing because then Breath of the Wild just wouldn't have it. I. It, uh, I wish that didn't exist. I don't. You know, I like. You know, I. I will. I don't like weapon durability in Breath of the Wild, but at least they do it well. And sure. so they give you plenty of weapons. They do. They get you they Tons don't force you to choose a weapon or anything like that, which I mean, neither did Skyward Sword, but you know, they do they give you plenty of options for weapon durability, so you don't really feel bad and you know that every weapon has a durability. Sure. Even yeah. the even the Master Sword has durability. It so does. you know, you you, you don't feel bad using a weapon. In fact, sometimes you're like, well, I'm just going to save this weapon. This this one weapon here is very strong. It's got a high damage. I know I'm going to save this for a really big fight later. Yeah, Whether it's a, it's a dungeon boss or maybe a mini boss, you know, like a Talus or Lionel or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, you're going to save your Ancient Arrows or whatever. I, I like that uh, this game, uh, Breath of the Wild, made me understand consumables quite well, and I think it did consumables and durability well. This game, though, there was no need. There was no need to, to have my shield. There was break. no need to have a shield that breaks. Like I get it, you you have a wooden shield, it lights on fire, it burns. Fine. I get that. I, I'm totally fine. okay with that. I have totally I have okay a metal that. shield, and this metal shield, if I get shocked by lightning, it does extra damage. Perfectly fine with that too. I'm perfectly completely, fine I with completely that agree. too. But, I agree. Um, having my shield take damage just because it was hit, I do not like that. I do not that's like kinda, that at all. That's that's kind of like, what the hell am I paying you for? Right, then why do I even have a shield? Yeah. I will say, though, I did like, since, since it was already established in the game that shields did have durability, I did like that the healing shield had infinite durability. I yes, of course. If you're gonna have a, a it shield has that to. has infinite durability, it has to be the healing. It has shield. to be. Yes. Like if and Breath that, of the that Wild shield cannot. Let's go ahead. If Breath of the Wild were to say, uh, you know, we it introduced it said everything has a durability. If it was gonna be that there was gonna be one thing, maybe two things in the game that did not have a durability, healing shield, master sword. It can't be anything else. I completely it agree. In can't fact, be I, anything I else. think. I think Breath of the Wild actually did a misstep. I think the Highland Shield should have had infinite durability. I agree. I agree. I understand. I, I understand Tears of the Kingdom not having infinite durability for the Helian Shield because I think the shock factor of Ganondorf breaking a Hylian Shield is awesome, which fair. happened to me when I fought Ganondorf. He really? broke my Hylian Shield. Oh, yeah. He, oh, dude. He smoked my Hylian Shield. That's so um, funny. He actually destroyed every shield I had in my inventory. Wow! Yeah, he went through every one of them. Well, he is buff. But, and there's only one person who's allowed to... I, have, I give permission to break my Hylian shield, and that's Ganondorf. Absolutely. So, because Tears of the Kingdom had Ganondorf and Breath of the Wild didn't have Ganondorf, I we'll am perfectly happy to say Tears of the Kingdom can have a near-infinite durability, with the exception of Ganondorf. I'm, or, like, super high. I'm totally cool with that. Sure. But Breath yeah. of the Wild? 
What's your excuse, bro? Like, just have a high, super high durability. Give us what we want. It's locked behind a boss anyway in the hardest region on the map. Right. Like, if you've gotten the Highland Shield, like, you've earned it, I right. think. I will say that in uh, Breath of the Wild, I literally, in my real playthroughs, never broke the Healing Shield. I had to go... Me neither. I had to go out of my way to break the shield. Yeah, and that's good. Which that's is really good. good. I will say... I think they did the durability very well in Breath of the Wild as well for the healing shield. Like even though it does it does break, but it's have a long you time but have you ever broken it? <laughs> right. Like that's the point. It's like yeah, it breaks, but have you ever broken it? Like I actually, think, I think in Tears of the Kingdom I got the Hylian shield early on. I can't remember how you get it in Tears of the Kingdom, but I got it early on, and I used it for the rest of my playthrough i did the same thing with breath of the wild like in my not first playthrough but like the master mode playthrough because mm -hmm. i you knew went straight to it i went straight to it and i used knew, it for your whole playthrough I knew, and i used the whole playthrough it never broke i used right. it literally the entire game never did never but never it broke. but then again in my opinion the fact that it could break is stupid i agree to me i agree but Again, well, to the other side of, I never broke it, so. Yeah. Well, uh, in anyway, going back, to, we're not talking about Breath of the Wild here. We're talking about Skyward Sword. Right, back to Skyward and, Sword. I and, have uh, another you know, mechanic that I liked as well. Okay. Um, in Skyward Sword, the, you were talking about combat earlier. Okay. I will say there has never been a game that has made me feel so good about myself for being able to parry every attack than Skyward Sword. How do you parry in this game? You Besides shield bash. The shield. Besides the shield bash, is there any other way to parry? No, that's it. Okay. At least um, I think so. There might be one enemy that you could like parry his his attacks with like your sword, but like. Uh, yeah, I think there's bash. something about the the nunchuck thrust that's really satisfying. It's extremely to... satisfying. Cause, cause... I felt like I was actually doing it. Because you were. Yeah. It's because you were. <laughs> because I was. <laughs> you know, I think. Um... It okay, was going back to Breath of the Wild. It was the so again. satisfying but to me. You can you can parry using a shield bash in those games too, but it's just a you just press a button. It's just a yeah you know, uh, it's you nowhere near as satisfying. It, it doesn't feel the same satisfying as thrusting the nunchuck for uh, sure. And I can yeah. do it with every enemy on every attack. Now you could do that in Breath of the Wild too if you're good enough, but uh, or if you even spend the time. But I didn't have to spend the time. I don't. So, you've, you've been watching my Dark Souls playthrough. You know I never, ever parry ever. I can. I don't. I just get out of the way. It's the same thing for Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom. I flurry rush. I was a flurry rush guy. I was not a, a parry guy. I parried one enemy in Breath of the Wild, one, and it was the Guardians. Yeah, me too. That was it. I always prefer to backflip flurry rush if I can. Me too. Which is all the more reason the whole thing about like. You only flurry rush, I think, is why you struggle with Thunder Black Cannon. Because he is pretty much a what if I attack you while you dodge? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's a hard boss. He's yeah, so hard. I, mean, I think he's really, harder to flurry really rush the than way, Really, the way to beat Thunder Blight is you drink a level three electricity resistance and then you parry him. That's well, how that's how you beat him. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I don't do that. Yeah, that's okay. Anyway. We're not talking about Breath of the Wild. We're talking about Skyward Sword. And, yeah, I think uh, I, you're right. But, again, how are you pairing? You're pairing with a durability-losing shield. So That's true. That's and true. And if you miss... it's If you, you miss... You take damage you to your shield. You suffer. It actually sucks, especially if it's, like, a minor enemy. That's true. I remember like, the Octoroks, the grass Octoroks that would shoot the things at you. I loved killing those. I but, loved killing those. But, dude, like, okay, and I like that they gave you a shield that, like, regenerates durability. But, again, Same. That, even had shield that, shield, that shield had, the shield that had regenerating durability, did not it's have durability, a uh, no, it didn't, which meant if you got hit in, like, if you got double tapped. Right, if, know, it, you're if it broke, on, you're, you're screwed. Yeah, and it's like, uh, anyway. I might be spending too much time on this game, but so be it. Listen, I'm gonna put this... it's 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 a valid game to talk about. We have a lot of opinions about it because yep. that was probably in our peak. 
yeah. Zelda days. Yeah, and the weight between this game and Breath of the Wild, although even though it's true to say that there was a longer time gap between Tears of the Kingdom and the Breath of the Wild than there was between Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild, this gap between Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild felt like felt an so age. long. It felt like a total age. There's is there really a longer gap between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom? Yeah. Tears See, of the Kingdom came out in 2017. Yeah. And Skyward Sword came out in 2011. And Tears of the Kingdom came out in 2023. That's six years for both. Except when you consider the release dates month and day. Really? Yeah, when you break it down by month and day, Skyward Sword is just a little bit closer by like a couple weeks. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I can tell you for sure it felt way longer than Tears of the Kingdoms. Yeah. Yeah. But just to, but even if you don't break it down, it's a six year gap between the before and and six year gap for the after. Yeah. But the the before gap felt like forever. It did. It did. Yeah. It did. I think the HD version of this game, you know, was just so great. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. It made the game 60 frames per second. This game really benefits from being 60 frames per second. I it, bet it It does. is so... It's gorgeously smooth. I, I, it might be the best-looking Zelda game I've ever played. That's some high praise. And it might be... I, I, so, I've played Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. I think Skyward Sword Remastered might actually be better. Graphics. So, I'm... I'm putting it in C tier because I don't think it's up there with Tears of the Kingdom. I think Tears of the Kingdom is better. I at least let me try that again. I like Tears of the Kingdom more. Okay. Than I liked Skyward Sword. Okay. And I don't think that that's particularly controversial. Um, I with I, I mean uh, I think I have the same thing. Oh, do you? I think so. within I don't remember. C tier. Looked at my screen in a long time. Within C tier, Skyward Sword has a lot of great things going for it. Uh, so I'm putting it above Spirit Tracks. I, I think Skyward Sword is the top. I think that's definitely the right choice. Yeah. I think that's definitely the right choice. Yeah. So that's that's where I'm putting Skyward Sword. Okay. Wow, you and I have very varying degrees on that. Yeah. Our tier lists are very different, and that's good. I think half of the difference is just the fact that you've played more games. Yeah, that's fair, too. Oh, no. Oh, oh. dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh no we knew this day would come oh no here it is you want to go first uh, i think i have to go first because i think you went first last time i think i, I did i did it, I, okay. it is it is your turn all right all right all right dude dude shot yeah <laughs> that's good every time Every time I discuss every a single game, time, every time, every time I talk, I talk about a Zelda game. Yep. And I think about what makes a Zelda game good or bad. Yep. In the back of my head, I am always comparing it to a specific game. Yep. And this is that game. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in the back of my head, I'm always saying, did this game, did Skyward Sword do this better? Or did Twilight Princess do this better? Oh, I can tell you. Did Breath of the Wild do this better? Or did Twilight Princess do this better? Yeah. Did Ocarina of Time do this better? Or did Twilight Princess do this better? Now that's the question. And I do that with every game on in Zelda. I always compare it to this game. Now, you and I come from a very specific time frame of Zelda fans. We grew we were the peak we were the we were the target audience when this game was released. Yes. Uh, we were not the target audience when Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask was released. We were a bit too young. Uh, in fact Ocarina of Time released in nineteen ninety eight. I was born in nineteen ninety eight. So I wasn't pl I was not the target audience of Ocarina. For sure. And Frankly, I didn't really know how to use a controller when Majora's Mask came out, so I wasn't the target audience for that one either. You could make an argument that I was kind of the target audience for Wind Waker, but definitely Twilight Princess I was the target audience for. No, I was not a target audience for Wind Waker. Okay, fair enough. No, I was not. It, the game had come out. The game came out in 2004. I was seven. Now nah, Wind Waker's too advanced for that. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Then I will say the same. But Twilight Princess, 
we were the target audience for Twilight Princess. And honestly, we weren't even the target audience because it was kind of because of its tone, the darkness and the edginess of it. Um, it was kind of more targeted towards folks a little bit older than us. I would probably say maybe targeted towards maybe even teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, dude, definitely. This this game is great. Yes. This game was so good. Uh huh. There were parts of this game that. There are parts of this game that still do not that that still are the best. We were just talking about the double claw class. shots. Yeah, the double claw shots. I mean. There are still things had, in this game that are the best of the franchise. This game had nine temples, nine dungeons, just like Ocarina. Yep. But unlike Ocarina, uh, a lot of these are bangers. Yes. I mean, dude, City in the Sky we already talked about. City Arbor's in the Grounds. Sky, oh my god. Arbor's Grounds Arbor's is a banger. Grounds dude. I still think the shock factor for me when I went to Arbor's Grounds was crazy. I had never ever seen such a place about Arbiter's Grounds. I think Lake Bed Temple was done way better than the Water Temple. I don't have to play the Water Temple of Ocarina of Time to know that Lake Bed is better. The game, dude, Lake Bed Temple, I did not get stuck in for years. Neither did I. The the fact that you could control your water movement, you had this they said, let's not do the crappy water. How do, like the way that Link moves in water in Ocarina of Time. Oh, it's when they terrible. got to Twilight Prince. When they got to Twilight Princess, let's say they said, let's give him the Zora armor and yeah. let him let's swim. Do, let's do the this for realsies. Yes, and uh, of course they already corrected that with Majora's Mask by making him a freaking Zora, but they were like, right? Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> they sure did. Yeah, so, you know, they did a full 180 on that. But even here, where they didn't make him a Zora, they made him competent underwater. And they did everything right with that. Um, I was blown away. I mean, we, you know, you can't rate a game based on graphics. Or at least I don't. But I was blown away by the graphics in 2006. I was like, that water is the best video game water I have ever seen. At the time that it was released. Yeah. And I loved Lake Helia. I thought Lake Helia and the and that uh, you mentioned that uh, Lake Helia was huge. Yeah, Lake Helia was so big. Lake Helia was and, huge. Um, you mentioned that like river canyon. Yeah. Area. Yeah. Like, that was a great area. Yeah. Every time I go through that area, I was like, bro, I wish I could drink that water. <laughs> that water looks so good, dude. Um, oh, I thought you were gonna make a comment about the water. No, no, um, no. The, the game is gorgeous. Yeah, it was gorgeous. The, um, I so think, I you know, think, since we're talking about it, I think the lighting of that game was done very well. Yes, especially, uh, actually, there were two ways that it did lighting well: was the normal world and the Twilight world. So, the normal world, I think the lighting was done very well. But even the Twilight world, they intentionally went for this like blue, extra bloom oversaturation effect to let you know you were in the Twilight. And then they added these like visual effects of these like dark squares. Yeah. Uh, that would float up and down. Yeah. When you were just like in random areas, whenever yeah. you would be in the area, kind of like a filter. They'd be like a filter over the camera. Um, that was a really good move. Yeah. And I thought it looked really good. And, and you know, so anyway, but you can't, I don't grade games based off of the graphics though. But that doesn't but, mean we can't talk about it. That's right. That doesn't mean you can't talk about it. Snow Peak Ruins, I thought was great. Um, I think it was so unique. Yes. You don't see a whole lot of snow regions in these games. Right. I um, thought it was so they're... unique. I, In fact, I can't think of a snow region prior to it. Prior to this? Um, yeah. Yeah, post, post it, I can think of like Hebra. Yeah, post, I can um, think of you know, Hebra Mountains and yeah. the Gerudo Highlands from Breath the of the Wild. Highlands, yeah. But I mean, yeah. even Jump Skyward Sword. I mean, there was no snow in Skyward Sword. No, there wasn't. There was no snow. And there was, there was and no there was ice. a whole, yeah. And uh, I really liked the gameplay where you could, um, where you were like following the sense through the snow in the blizzard. Uh huh. Um, I really liked it when you see. were following the. 
because you couldn't see, but Wolf could. Um, I really liked that you could follow sense into other various parts of the game. Um, there were several. There were like two other areas where you were like following sense to get from one location to another, and I I thought that was pretty unique that you could do that and uh that you had the you had this sensing mode and it kind of changed the whole you know you, you had limited vision but you could see a lot more within a small area yeah um i liked the i mean i thought the hyrule castle i thought the ascent to hyrule castle i thought dark dark nuts are the best mini boss mini bosses because not because of the actual fight i actually think lionels are a better fight but i agree like in terms of like the Kind of the aura that they put off, dude. <laughs> Does that make sense? Dark their nuts aura is like look their aura vicious. is unmatched. They do. They look yeah. vicious. The way... When I look at a dark nut, I'm like, this dude is not messing around. This I dude gotta be is careful when I walk up to that man. Yeah, this yeah. dude is a beast. Look at that armor he's wearing. Look at his weapon. Yeah. He is a beast. I even in Dark Souls, I said, look at that man. That man is a dark. He's a dark nut. nut. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is a dark so, like, nut. Yeah. So you're. And not a whole lot of um, and not major only, enemies. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I cut you off. But not only okay. did I look at him and say, that's a dark nut, but I felt the... Same feeling? The, I felt the the need for... I felt unsafe. You know, I needed to be very careful around this dark nut because if I do something wrong, I am dead. Yeah, dude, I think... And that know, applied... Best... And that was done just by visuals. That's how good yeah, it was for Twilight Princess to dude, introduce the Dark Knight. It's, in the way it's that all they about did. the, yeah, dude. It's all about the aura, dude. I think like because you have to you have to be careful when you're stepping around them. Yes. Like, as you're kind of walking around them, if you're like, if I, if I attack this guy and I don't break through his armor in this hit, he's gonna hit me. And, and I'm gonna take like eight I'm hearts gonna, of damage. It's gonna be like yeah, it's gonna be like eight hearts. And this is not you know this is pre Guardians where. You know, in, in the gar in in Breath of the Wild and in Tears of the Kingdom, you have the situation where it's like you have a lot of hearts, and they're very. Those games play a lot of they play loose and fast with taking a lot of hearts from you, and that's kind of normal. Sure. But well, in this game, it's like, in this game and all the previous games, it's like when you take a hit, you're probably going to take a quarter heart damage. Right. So Maybe when this guy comes up, most. Yeah, so when this guy comes up and he takes like six hearts from you, you're like, oh, yo, yeah, that that was a pretty hard hit. Yeah, like um, if you don't have six hearts or a fairy, you're just dead if he hits you. Yeah, he's gonna get you. He he's is a Dark you. Souls and boss. <laughs> not to mention that how you fight him is pretty awesome, where you're check it, chinking away at his armor. Yeah, and not I was gonna say this earlier. Not a whole lot of major enemies slash mini bosses have two phases he does but this guy has two phases the dark knight does yeah the dark knight has two phases um dude this, this is how you know a game is great because we are only we've spent five minutes on one enemy like, <laughs> <laughs> so you know there are so many we could talk we could talk for two hours about this game oh not but, only could we we have Oh, we've, we've talked, talked for longer, more, long, way longer. I, um, I'm gonna save my breath, and I'm just gonna say this game for me is number one in S tier. There, there is no way that I am putting a game above this one because this game, this game shaped my childhood for sure. Not it shaped my childhood. It is. Sh it's even shaped my adulthood um, because I look back on this game with so much nostalgia. It was. Um, I already know that people will people are not gonna this. like that people aren't gonna like this people are but not gonna like that. this is my this this is my ranking yeah the other you know go make your own sure yeah yeah <laughs> if if so um i'm saving s tier for like the like the best the, right and sure ocarina could be in the best i'm with you there but george mask could be in the best but this is this for me this is this is the best sure this is sure the best. sure so Sure. So that's what I'm doing. Um, you want to save your breath, but I don't. I want to keep talking about it. Okay, go ahead. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> because the game is so good. It's just so good. Can we talk about, just for a second, we this haven't picture, talked about this yet. This picture is your profile. It is literally my profile picture on the Switch. And they provided me several different versions of Link, 
And as soon as I saw that one, that was it. I knew exactly which one that I had to pick. You had a poster of this for a while. I sure do. I still do. It's downstairs. Oh, really? Yeah. And um, when... Let's just talk about it for a moment. When you are a wolf and you have to proceed to do Minna's Lament. Oh, bro. We Can didn't we even talk, talk about, about that. Go ahead. Can we talk about that for a second? How just phenomenal that game was. I have, Dude, I have remember... never felt more like I am on a time crunch to save somebody's life. Yeah. Than I have when it was time to go save Midna. I still haven't. There has not been another game that has felt made me feel the same way. Uh, me neither. I about that. That same. that the first time you do it, you know. Today we know, you know, she's not going to die. She's not on a clock. But it doesn't matter if you know that or not. You get in the game and you hear the music, you hear the scene, you hear the characters, yeah, right? Everything the, the the rain. It's just like, but especially. Oh, you... especially on your first time especially on my first time i did not care about anything or anybody i said i have to go now there if is... i could go any faster i would have i was I have rushing found... i have only ever found in this game one flaw the one flaw of this game you ready for it i'm ready the only flaw of this game is that when you are in Midna's Lament scene and you are running and you pass by enemies, the, the lament ends and the battle music starts. Oh, yeah? That is the only flaw I have with this game. Oh. Like, in my opinion, because you run past so many enemies that it'll just kind of start and stop. And sure, I'm over yeah. here thinking, I'm over here thinking, I don't want battle music right now. I If I get in a fight with like a, just a Bacoblin on the side of the road or if I'm just going to run past him, just keep playing the music. Right. I don't care. Right. I did keep running. Right. I did well, keep I, running. I would, I would too. I'm just saying that you keep running and there would be enemies like nearby or chasing you. And or they should have kept the music. And they just should have kept the music if they aggro to you and you didn't care. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that is, that is a miss right there. But apart from that, that's, but, but that, that is such a small detail. It is. And everything else in this game is great. Minda's Lament. I, I I have never experienced anything like that in a video game. Ever. I didn't even get that from the Telltale games. Me neither. That was straight up the only experience I've had in a video game like that. Ever. Not even in a video game like that. Ever. Ever. Yeah. And I am 26 years old. I will be 27 in like less a than a month. Yeah. And I have played... Hundreds of video games at this point, probably. Yeah. I have never experienced that that feeling. Fantastic. Okay, now let's talk about something else. Let's talk about when you get the Master Sword. Oh, that scene? Yeah, let's talk about when you get the Master Sword. Dude, before we even talk about that, the lead-up to that moment... Yeah? You have to go through the... Lost Woods. You do. Which is a nostalgia trip. It is. You have to go you have to go deal with Skull Kid, another and, nostalgia trip. And they're playing the while while it's happening, they're playing the uh Lost Woods theme. They're playing the Lost Woods theme, that's right. Which is Sorry I really like song. The, that's true. Yes. You also have to um you have to do the hardest puzzle in the game, or one of the two Yeah, hardest the puzzles statues. In the game, which is the statues puzzle. Yes. That's, in my opinion, that's probably the hardest puzzle in the game. That puzzle took um, me so long to figure out the first time. Dude, we... I we think I probably got it game, by luck. We replayed that game during COVID, and I still struggled with that puzzle. Yeah. That's one of those where it's like, unless you know the exact... Like, unless you already know it. Right. It's a hard puzzle. Uh, yeah, and even if you know it, and then you forget it later... And yet the concept you, is so simple. It's a... Yeah, I completely agree. Um, yeah, dude. And then the cutscene, when you get it is great the best the best master it is sword the best master sword pull in any game cutscene. oh yeah dude in yeah. any game and it doesn't end it's not even there close because there is a because immediately as a consequence of 
you getting the master sword is your ability to shapeshift at will. Yes. And your ability to fast travel. Yes. So getting it is a sword, huge unlock. It's a huge unlock. It, huge it, it really unlock. Sets it opens the, the game. It opens the game up from I'm doing this in a linear fashion to now I can go anywhere. Yes. And you go you like you have this situation where it's like this this one item it doubles your damage from the Orden sword. Yeah. It, it it doubles your damage. It lets you shapeshift at will and it lets you fast travel. And it's just and not necessarily because of those last two are not necessarily because of the sword itself, but more because of the item that is kind of associated with the sword, that kind of dark crystal. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's just, it changes, it opens up the whole game, as you said. It's just great. It does. Um, I love that this game did not have durability. Looking back. Oh my God. So glad. So glad it didn't have durability. Oh my God, yes. Um, yeah, like, I get it's not realistic that a sword doesn't need to be sharpened. I, I get that that's not realistic, but it's this is a video game, you know. Yeah, it's, it's not. And not only is it a video game, but this is the master sword. If there's yeah. any sword I expect to be sharp for all time, it's the master sword. Yeah, I'm with you there. I'm with you there, dude. And I think like, I think this game just did so many things right. You can surf in this game on the snow. Yes. You oh can, my god, I haven't even gotten there yet. You just took you me can. There. Yes, you, you can, can. You snowboard. You can snowboard. You can. You what can... Zelda game lets you snowboard? Oh, I not can tell you. you. One Twilight Princess. You, <laughs> not only can you snowboard, you can skateboard on the spinner. You can, yeah. Yeah. You can. That whole that whole dungeon. Once you get the skate, once you get the spinner, is I'm Tony Hawk now. Yes. And so yes, you're Tony Hawk and Spider Man. In the, in the same, same game. game. Yes. Absolutely. So the music. So let's talk about let's talk about the uh, the ice castle. Okay. Uh, Snow Peak Ruins. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. I know for a fact that that is your favorite boss music. I love that boss of music. all time. Yes. I know that's your favorite one. Yeah. I will say now, and I, I just bring that up because I'm going to transfer tra move into the boss fight music in this game when you get the opportunity to attack that boss it is fantastic it's like a tri it it's is, very triumphant it is the best it's like it is it is triumphant it's yeah. like now is your opportunity go get it yeah it is fantastic the way that they implement it and they implement it all throughout not in every boss but all throughout the game they implement it through through this boss here and this boss here and this boss here and the, you know the final one the most important one is the dragon where they implement it like yeah. like i'm standing on top of a freaking dragon and i'm stabbing it in the back as he falls down that's uh, that's incredible and as it's happening i'm listening to that epic music it is Dude, another incredible thing. Another thing about this game is that it has the best um, mini games, dude. You sumo wrestle in this game. Yes, I. You're going to get every place that I want to go. <laughs> you're going everywhere I, heard, I want to go. I heard goats. There were goats. I yes. Heard of goats. Like yes. At least, like on like three occasions. You know what I really liked in this game? What's up? You What's started up? the game with Aponya. You yes. started the game with the horse. It wasn't a quest to get that, the horse. You didn't have to. Be, you have to go catch one and right. tame it. I didn't have to go catch one and tame it like in like in in Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. No, I first of all, I never. I used didn't the realize horse. how much I didn't realize how much crap Breath of the Wild was going to get today. I never from... used Breath of the horse in Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. Like, I only ever use the horse if there is a specific reason to use the horse. I use Breath of the Wild's horses. Uh... Pretty much every playthrough. I but. never use them. Like if I if I'm playing the game, just playing the game. I'm like normally I'm never using them. I, when I'm doing like the speed run, absolutely I'm using it. This dude, Twilight Princess had hidden grottos, so there were plenty of secrets abounding. Like there just, were. Like, oh, speaking of hidden secrets, uh, you know what? I'm gonna wait. I want to save that one for last. Oh, okay. I want to save that one for last. Dude, um, here's another mini mini game that was really good. Yeah, dude, the, sumo um, wrestling was fantastic. 
Dude, sumo wrestling was great. They implemented dude, was... sumo wrestling in the boss. I love that. Dude, they had um, what's the uh, in Castle Town? There was this like cage area with the with the claw shots. With the double claw shots, yeah. That's a, that is a great mini game. What a great mini game! <laughs> and then they had a, they had another one. Um, you were in this like western cowboy town. And, yes, and you had to, and you, um, you had to like, like shoot all the targets of bandits and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. You had to kill all the all the Boca blends that were there. Dude, the mini games of this game were unparalleled. And they played that music, like Western style music. Yeah, I felt like Western I was music? playing. I felt yeah. like I was in, 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 felt like in Black Ops Two buried. Dude, you're a cowboy, a sumo wrestler, a snowboarder, Tony Hawk, and and a wolf, and a wolf. What a game! Okay. Also, talk about variation of game. Also, all right. Let's talk about for a second. And if you don't want to do any of that, you can go boat down a river. I was about to go there. Or herd goats. Yes. Or, like, you can fish in this game. You can fish. You know, if you wanted to, like, I, I didn't fish. I fished like twice when the game called for it during the tutorial, and then later when you needed to go to Snow Peak and Zora. Sure. But like, I did the fishing. Like, I went could, out on could... the boat and I did the fishing. Speaking of which. That lady where you did the fishing in the fishing pond, if you walk in her house, she's got this game where you, you move the Wii remote and you have to move the ball along the track to get to the end. And if it falls off, you have to restart. Do you know this mini game? This. I don't remember this very well. What was it called? I don't know what it's called, but if you look up um, fishing pond Wii motion game... You'll 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 find the game. Is this it? Am I in the right? Is this the right spot? Uh, yes, that is the right spot. I forgot about this area. This is this is great. Yeah, and if you if um, it, it had a game, like look up the tilt. Game. Roll goal, roll goal. That's, that's it. it. That's the that's the one. This thing had like fifty levels. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. This thing had eight like, f I don't remember. I remember there being a lot more than eight. Um, there are eight levels. Hmm. In here, oh, and then after this, oh, if you, you get an item, and then after that, she will mirror the levels, and then reduce the times. And then after that, the pattern will repeat, and the time limit will go down again. Until level 8-8 eight, eight is done. There were 64 so levels. 64 levels. There were, okay, I remember there being a lot more than just 8. There are 64 levels in this game. What a complex. And it was, I, uh, I never beat them all. I never beat complex, them all. Dude, this game, it just had everything. It did. It had everything. And I'm not even done talking about it yet. Let's talk about now sure. the Temple of Time. When you walked in to the Temple of Time into the past, like, you know, when you when you put the sword in and it was yeah. like, you can now enter the Temple of Time. Yeah. And you walked in and you heard and you saw the words mm -hmm. Temple of Time on your screen and you heard the Ocarina Temple of Time music. Dude, nostalgia. It was, I, it, yes, it was beautiful. If they and would have the used thing. any other song, I would have said this was terrible. If they would have the remixed it, I would have said this is unacceptable. I completely agree. And here's the thing. That that area, if there's any areas to be nostalgic about, I mean, come on, man. That was like that area is huge. Iconic. The Temple of Time is an iconic location. Yes. Yes. And they did it I think they did it the best. In that game. Yeah. Because, like, out of all mm -hmm. of the recreations, I think that one is the best. Because the Ocarina yeah. Temple of Time is the Temple of Time. You know, Temple Breath of the of Wild Time. did not have the... The Breath of the Wild Temple of Time ruins did not have the original theme. No, they didn't. It was terrible. And they, they should have. Yes, they should have. Yeah. It was terrible. And um, when you walk in and you hear that, and you see it, and it, it looks gorgeous. I know you and I have said this several times, but we do not run in the Temple of Time. 
We walk. No, no, no running in my lobby. You walk when it comes in the to the temple. Yeah, you have to because walk. Because this dude. place demands respect. Yes. It demands respect. Yes. And it in, um, did it so in the, well. In the book of Exodus, the way the best way I can compare this is the Bible. In the book of Exodus, Moses is on Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. and he's hurting he's hurting animals, and there's the burning bush, and God is talking to Moses through the burning bush, and God tells Moses in that moment, he says, "Take off your sandals. This is holy ground." And that yeah, is the best way I can describe the temple, the temple of, time. of time. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. 100 You got to put respect on. You got to put some respect on it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And they did it so well. And having yeah. the Master Sword be in there, right there, in the Temple of Time, you know, after it's been battered and destroyed over time, having it be there was so good. And not to mention that the Master Sword, when you go get it, the Temple of Time is decrepit and ruined. Yeah. But the Master Sword is pristine. Pristine. A in fact, testament it, it's to got how sunlight well shining it on it. Yeah, it's it's like it's not even tarnished. Right, not at all. There's no dust it's, on this. They don't even need to oil it up. Like no, it's not at great. all. Yeah. It's fantastic. All right, now I'm going to bring up right. something else. We got a lot of things to bring up if you want to talk fully about this game. Well, I'm almost done. This is still one of the last things I want to bring up. Oh, okay, I'm thinking of more things. You're thinking of more things? Keep going, because I want my thing to be the last thing. Okay, uh, let's talk um, the events of this game. Okay. Dude, Zora's Domain freezes over in this game. Zora's Domain does freeze. It's it's like brutally terrifying, too. Like, it's, like it's you like go there really and dark. like the ghost, the ghost of the of the the queen's aura she's like all of my people are going to die dude you i am already dead you mentioned the ghost of the queen and i was i immediately got shudders because i still remember that her ghost like her um i guess her character model yeah. in the game it freaks me out it's just I, there's something so off about seeing her that it, 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 it floating there and all that. I'm just like, ooh, dude, leave me alone. I, I, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, dude, this, um, yeah, there was a part in this game where after you do the third dungeon, Zant will go and use the, basically force a light spirit to mortally wound Midna. Yes. That's against lament. both of their wills, yeah. of course. That's pretty heavy duty like show of show of power yeah. for a for a villain to do. To yeah. force a light spirit to do something. Yeah. Um, and not just any light spirit, that one is supposed to be the strongest one. Right. Right. It's and like, he certainly seemed that way based on his size. Sure, and the way he looks. I mean he's a big snake. Yeah. I wouldn't mess with him. No, especially when you compare it to like there was like a squirrel one. Yeah, one of them was like a moose. The first one you meet is like a moose. It's a goat. He's a goat. He's a goat. There, it's, there you go. Yeah. He's, yeah. There you go. See, like, yeah. come on, you're a goat. This dude's a big snake. In the third temple, you fight a leviathan. As, yes, as the boss. you do. And you do. When you enter that big chamber where he's resting dude like when i look back on that scene that was terrible now that i've now that i've played subnautica twice i have i look back on that scene when he's sinking to the bottom of that vast ocean it's uh, huge that cistern i'm like i just get the heebie-jeebies now dude yeah because maybe that's less twilight princess and more subnautica about how that game has impacted my opinion about water i think so um uh, or it's just the this swimming and stuff yeah but he's um, huge that arena that, that arena has to be the biggest one yeah very huge i, mean, I think the only humongous. the only arena i can the only two arenas i can think of are, are they really arenas the only two arenas i can think of that are bigger than that is dark beast ganon and breath of the wild when you're playing in 
Hyrule, Hyrule Field. Field. Sure. Which, again, I say, is that even really an arena? Yeah, and I, then I... Uh, Demon Dragon in Tears of the Kingdom when you're in the sky. Oh, that's not which... an arena either. Yeah, that doesn't really count as an yeah, arena. Yeah, those don't count. Yeah. Anyway, um, Zant, Midna, great characters. I think Midna um, is the best character, you know, the, like the, the best, best tag companion. Along. Yeah, companion. Yeah. I think she is the best one that we've ever had. I'm with you. I think I'm she was, I liked that she was sassy. She is light years better than Navi. Infinitely. And she's much better than Fee from Skyward Sword. I, I agree too. She's better I think, than Fee. I think Midna had the knowledge, but she also had, had the gall to call you out on being stupid for not knowing this. Yeah. I liked her. Her personality was fantastic. And she gave you, like, a motivation or a reason to be by your side and to be a companion to you. When you look at, for example, Fee, it felt like Fee was kind of Fee was forced, forced to be to be by your side. She, Fee was she forced. was like, I'm your, I am Siri, or I am Alexa. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I come with the sword. I, yeah, yeah, I come pre-installed. Yeah, and so you can't I, uninstall just, me. Right, right, right. And uh, you look at Navi, and she was clearly meant to help children who were playing Ocarina of Time understand, get a get a vague idea of what to do next. Listen, I can tell you as a child who played Ocarina of Time... It didn't work. It didn't work. I will tell you, she was fantastic for telling me what every enemy is. That's what I used her for back in the day. Yeah. I used her, I was like, what enemy is this? And she would be like, that's a Deku Baba. It will lunge at you, so be careful. And I'm like, that is very useful knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very but much for telling about... me that. But then when, she, when I'm like, I don't know where to go. And it's like, do you want to talk to Navi? I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll talk to Navi. And Navi's like, hey, by the way, um, what's that thing over there? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Where is that? Yeah. Like, that doesn't help me at all. You don't help me... You didn't help me when I was stuck in the water temple for years. Right. right. You did not and help you, me. Minna would have helped me, I feel like. Oh, Minna. Yeah, absolutely. And you think about... Here's another thing to think about. When you think about, like, what was Navi doing? Like, why was Navi with you? Other than because we needed gameplay elements to help. But, like, she was really only there... I mean, literally, the Deku tree said, go wake this kid up. And then he, she just never left yeah yeah she was your babysitter yeah she just never but she didn't do she wasn't a very good job at being your babysitter no but you compare those to fee and navi you compare those to minna and minna's like listen i have my own agenda and i'm not telling you shit about what that agenda is and yeah and you're like she was a mystery you in fact with fee you fee is your servant in for the first three dungeons of twilight princess you're minna's servant and, you are and she's, yeah and she's bossing you around she is and and uh she's like all right go you know hey you're a wolf right now but in order to be a human like if you're gonna you're, if you're gonna be of any use to me right you have to go get a sword and a shield yeah. from that village and i'm over here like hold on use to you like, like who do you think on. you are yeah like, I, I didn't know you were my manager like right and, I, uh, i'm the hero of of time like who and, do you think you are I got the so you kind of courage. You kind of start out, and she's very sassy to you. She's very sassy. And, uh, I liked it, though. I, uh, it's, it's very charming. Yeah, it's definitely very charming. I liked and it. Then personality. A, you gave a, her a personality. It totally gave She was not a... She was not Siri. Right. And she that wasn't was Fee. Fee was a robot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then as you kind of, like, go throughout the game, she opens up to you. She it turns out that she's a, she's a little bit cold, and she doesn't really... She's standoffish. She's almost, it's almost as if, like... Yeah, I don't know. She's yeah. just yeah, she's yeah. just cold, and but Zach, like she warms up to you. Zach, you I, have I'm trying... I have something to say okay. to you. All right, go ahead. You are going to love Majora's Mask. I'm so. I have. I, I, already I have. Know that. I've sat here and I have decided you are going to love Majora's Mask. I've I decided it a long time. I think it's going to be number two too. on your on your on your list. I agree. I think it's going to be number two as well. I have decided. Um, anyway, I already know continue. it's going to. Yep. Yeah. Sure. So. So, um, yeah, uh, you and I are in agreement about that, about Majora's Mask. So, but yeah, we, as as you go throughout the game, Minda warms up to you. She becomes 
like more open and she te- and she she, and she drops she drops the the lore bomb. she drops the act she drops the, she drops the act that like she's not this tough like i'm here and you are my plaything. you're my dog right she like she she actually drops the act and you realize that this girl is desperate for yes her. She's to like, save save her people, right? To save her kingdom. That is so complex. When what she tells complex... you, when she tells you her full story, it's like, wow! Now I'm motivated to help you. Yeah. Right. And like, this now, game. And she 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 had a good reason for not telling you at the beginning, because you didn't know what was going on yet. Yeah, you were a little. Yeah, you were out of the loop. Right. You didn't know. All you knew was, I'm a wolf now. Why? And she's like. I can tell you, but you have to do what I say first. She didn't even say that. She was like, you want out of here? She I did. can help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, but you got to do what I say. Yeah. And that's how it started. And then it evolved into, oh, you and I have the same goal of, or at least you and I have different goals. You're trying to save your kingdom. I'm trying to save my kingdom. But in order to do that, our... But yeah, both goals are achieved the same way. Both goals are, they're aligned. Yeah. yeah. So we have a vested interest. And then... And then once that is established, it becomes like, oh, now we're on a revenge quest. Again, we're both on a revenge quest against Zant. Then we're both on a revenge quest against Ganondorf. Right. And and then we're both on a quest to like get revenge for Zelda. Dude. And so he, it's like when he when Ganondorf is on the horse and he holds up Minda's yes, helmet. Yeah. And then it crushes dude, it's, that's it. Like, dude, it's like tear jerking. It is. And I at that point was like. Yeah, you're gonna die now. At that point, I like... did not feel that way. When I was a kid, when we were kids, and we were playing that, and that happened, do you know how I felt? No, how'd you feel? I felt fear. Really? I felt fear. Really? Of Ganondorf in that. I was like, because you you look at the power that Midna had acquired in that by that point by she's she's gotten all the fused shadows. Right. She's had her she's had her moment with Zant. Where she's reclaimed her throne, if you will. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And and at this and and she's busted the barrier to the Hyrule Castle, which was a very tough barrier. And you're like, I looked at that barrier and I was like, bro, you and I bonked on that barrier so many times <laughs> trying to roll past it. And she just went and shattered it in pieces. Yeah, she like used, it was glass. She picked up a giant spear and stabbed it and was done. Right. And so I'm like, oh, this is this is our trump card. This is how we win because she is so much she, there's nothing that can beat this. Oh, well. And then only to see Ganondorf crush her crown like right in front of you. I was like, we're done, dude. We're we're cooked. That's it. Game's over. That if 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 cooked was a word that we were using in 2006, that's the word I would have used. I was right. like, we're cooked. Right. We're done. Right. It's over. The game is over. He won. And the music that plays you know when, he, said back when then? he shows the crown being crushed. Back then, we, back then, we would have said, it's time to lay down and die. That, yeah. Yeah. When you see yeah. that, you might as well just lie down and die. I mean, you're not going to... What are you going to do? <laughs> it actually took... It literally took the power of the gods to save us from not getting sliced in half by his sword in that moment. As he charged at us with the horse. But you know what? He didn't. He, we we killed him. We got him. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. we got him. Now, one thing that is a bit underwhelming, it's not a flaw, but it is a little bit underwhelming. The final boss of this game, there's a, the the 1v1 with Ganondorf. I respect the 1v1, but it's a little bit lacking. It is. It is. You, I will say I can... liked four phases. I agree. I liked four phases I too. Liked I four really phases. I thought it was very interesting, you know, how it really felt like it was a really long dragged out fight, but it was it didn't feel like it was long dragged out. It just felt like this is an endurance test. Like, yeah, it didn't feel long and dragged out because it you were changing like what was going on every every time couple of minutes every yeah. time it was it was different. You know, you first you fight Zelda, you know, puppet Zelda, and then you fight as Wolf Link to fight Dark to fight Ganon. And then you are on the horse, and then you're just you know slashing him on the horse, and then he's like, "All right, enough." And then you, then you have the one v one, which I will say was completely underwhelming. Yeah, I think it was underwhelming too, but that's okay. It's not a flaw, but you know, I walked into that fight thinking I'd get the Tears of the Kingdom fight, and you know, I did later, 
But anyway. I really it's... liked something that that game did in that boss fight that nothing else has done yet or since or before was you had saber locks. Oh, dude, the saber locks. The saber locks. I forgot about the saber lock. The saber locks. <laughs> Yeah, no other game has done that yet. Yeah, and, the Saber Locks, uh, they were great. That is a great addition. They were fantastic. Although, to be fair, lore-wise, it really doesn't make sense because that man had the Triforce of Power. And how are you going to overpower a guy with the Triforce of Power? With the Triforce of Courage. No, nah, that doesn't work that way. Well, it does in this game. Let's be real. The Triforce of Power is Let me re- stronger okay, how about than the Triforce this? of Courage. Master Sword. Combined with the Triforce of Courage. Okay, maybe. I'll give you that. All right. I'll give you that. All right, there we go. But, all right, whatever. Anyway. Um, anyway, I really liked the game. four fights. I thought I thought it was good. You know, every, most games from this point from that point forward, you had two phases. Even yeah. games before Ooh. that had two phases. But four, four, was, four was a nice change. I liked it. Four was, four was great. It felt complete. It did. It, it felt, felt really good. It felt like... It felt well earned when you finally hit that final blow, the the ending. The finish strike. when it popped up, finish. Yeah. yeah, when it when you hit that, it felt like this is, I have won. I won. I have beat you, I have beat you four different ways. Yeah. So, you're done. Yeah. And uh, it just it's very satisfying, dude. Um, another good boss fight, Zant. Zant was an excellent boss fight with the Zant changing arena. Did, Zant said, "What if we turned." Um, Pod Zombies Revelation yes. made into a boss fight. Yes, that's what that was. Yes, and, and it was uh, great. It was great. It was great, man. They did so well. It was fantastic. I think, they, I think we need more boss fights that are like that. Actually, I think it was so unique. Um, I don't know that anybody else could do that. Like any other villain. Yeah, like I, Ganondorf can't do that. I don't think Girahim could have done it. I don't think Girahim could have done it. I don't think he had it in him. Like, I agree. I, I think his theming was just too. His theming was too strong. He had Girahim had the theme of like, um, you know, when you think about his music, and you think about the um, the really high violin strings. Yeah. Da, 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 da. yeah. Um, you just kind of like this is not the theme of somebody who's going to take me back to... To all the places I've like, been. But when you start into that yeah. Zant fight, he is. When you see Zant and he's all crazy, you're like, this is a guy who would take yeah, me to this that guy monkey is baboon fight. Like, you remember that monkey baboon fight? Yes, with the big red butt. And you're like, yeah, and he and he took you back to that place? Yeah, and he... And he, and started he, running around like the monkey? Yeah, and then and, he slapped his butt too. Yeah, and they're yeah. all... <laughs> the, wait, wait, did he really? Yeah! <laughs> Yeah, this the, uh, insane. He takes you. He takes you back to the to the um, Leviathan fight. Uh huh. Underneath the third dungeon, and it's just a giant head. It's just his. It's just, it's his, just head. his head. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. You're like, Gearham would not do that. That's just not his character. No, nobody else He's could pull re- that off. Nobody else could do that kind of. And so you had a character that was like simultaneously menacing, but also kind of like the Joker from he Batman. He was. He was goofy. Goofy, yeah, goofy is a good word. He Menacing a... and goofy at the same time. It's kind of like the Joker from Batman. A little bit, yeah. He was a goofy character. Yeah, yeah. and uh, really well, really well done boss fight there. Um, One of the best of all time. Yeah, and and they helped establish his power level when he got there by doing the stuff that he did before by turning Midna into Midna's lament. Right. And you're just like, so when you go up to the fight, you're like, okay, we got to be ready for this. Right. You know yeah. that he's he's got some strong sauce. Yeah, but then you get in joke. there, and he's and then he and then he becomes insane, right? And he's slapping his booty. I think he became insane. It, this is another thing. You can go back to the lore. It's like, why did he become insane? Maybe because he knew his time was limited, and he maybe and it's like you know none of the, when Giraham realized his time was limited, he started getting pissed. Mm-hmm. He was like, "I'm gonna be rageful at you," and you're like, "You know, I kind of expected that," but this yeah, guy was like, sense. "I'm gonna I'm gonna cope with knowing that I'm about I'm getting my." my ass whipped right now with like laughter yeah you're like you know i don't see that a lot <laughs> yeah i mean he was insane uh, yeah he was great insane is a good word so you know yeah um let's talk music for a second okay In this game can i jump to the best song of all time um uh, do you have the slightest 
idea how little that narrows it down. From Twilight Princess? Do you have the slightest idea how little that narrows okay, it down? Okay, I'm just going to jump to it then. <laughs> okay. The Mallow Mart theme song. That is not the best. <laughs> no. It is the best song in that game. You're memeing right now. You're memeing right now, dude. That is not the best song in this game. <laughs> I am memeing. I am memeing, but only a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> only a little bit. That song is so good. When you're in there, you go, it's so good. <laughs> and, the dudes are, and the dudes are like up, waving their arms and they're having a great time. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, oh it's fan- I love walking in. That's my favorite Company store. Company mandated good times. It's my favorite store in the game. That's your favorite store of all time, dude. It I is, think it, it trumps Beetle. It, I, it might trump Beetle, bro. It's one of the best stores of all time. Dude. Oh, it's so fantastic. Okay, anyway. Yeah, now, it is, now, it is now, the now, best. Please. It is the best store in the Zelda franchise. Please tell but me now, about the Okay, music. legitimate music. Dude, okay. Well, we already talked about Blazetta. Music. We already yeah. talked about Blazetta. Yep. Um... The boss fight of Ganondorf phase four when you're when you're in the one v one and it opens with the drums, you're like, oh, that's should I play it or is that gonna be bad for the stream? That'll probably be bad. Okay, well you can picture it in your head. Um, the drums that come up, you're like, ooh, I like that, you know, and uh, makes you feel epic. Uh, it's like this is a really good fight. Actually, you're, you're you know fighting what? somebody who. You know what? I'm not making money anyway. Play it. All right. Is it going to be taken down? No. If right. anything, I'll just silence it if I have to. If they're like, eh, you can't okay. play this. I don't care. I'm not making money anyway. Play it. No, 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 no. The 1v1. Second half. No, no, no. I want it. Uh, Final boss? Maybe? No, orchestrated? That's not it. No, not this. Not orchestrated. I'm kind of worried about these not being it. Okay, let me go back. Let me just play this. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) So when the beat, when the drums come on, I'm like, this is really good. Oh, dude, that animation he's about to do when he's like, ha, 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 ugh. And he gets serious. He, he, he locked in. He did. It's so funny. I love that. Had, okay, we'll, we'll play it back. There he, it is. <laughs> <laughs> he locks in, dude. Like, he lock- does. <laughs> it's such a good animation. All right, another good thing. He said, I'm going to show you that I am not salty. I'm vengeful. And he uses the execution blade that was meant to kill him. Yeah. That's pretty hardcore. It is. That's like, that's that would be the equivalent of if somebody tried to shoot you and you take their gun and then and... that's how you execute your enemies. Right. That's a statement right there. Mm-hmm. All right. We're here for the music. Check this out. Yeah, yeah, let's get there. We haven't even mentioned that he has, that Zelda had the bow of light, and she was in the fight. Ooh. You just talked over it, bro. No, I heard it, I heard it. <laughs> bro, how can you... Look at this. Look at this, man. Yeah. How can you not look at this and say... This is an the flowing cape, the lightning. Yeah, right. That right there, that's a man. <laughs> that is a, I mean, just it's that's a man. Like Link, Link right cinematic. there. Link, 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 Link is a dude. But that Ganondorf, <laughs> yeah. that is a man. Ganondorf is a man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, dude, he. It was so like ready that even link had to lock in right before the he did turned on like look at him not locked in here right and then and he, now he has to he has to lock in he had to get he had to get serious he did oh bro and then he Ew. right There's there the saber lock yep all right so music the 
Music was fantastic. Music was fantastic. We already talked about Blazetta. We talked about Ganondorf. Maybe Going back to the Zant fight, the way that the Zant fight starts is... Um, yeah. Yeah, Binda's Lament. Yeah, absolutely. Zant fight music. Listen to this. Listen to the way this this starts with the with the dark uh, minor chords. Oh, In great. Well, Thank you. I don't care. I don't care either. I like you. Are you ready? Sir. Yes. Great. It, it's a especially, great start. Especially when you pair it with um, the fight itself, like the way he slowly rises. Yeah. Let me see if I can. Here we go. The way he it start it, it the music kicks in with his rise right here. It's kind of ominous. It is. It's so, great. Yeah, it's it's awesome, dude. Um yeah, and you mentioned the the motif of like the triumphal theme when he's when Link is about to bash somebody's head in. Um, yeah, that's a great theme. Fantastic. Um, I think Ordon Village is a very happy tune. Yeah. Uh, I think tw the Twilight Realm has a very spooky feel it to does. it, which it is does. really good for the atmosphere. Here, we'll pull that one up too. Um. I thought I actually said this. You did. I, um, I, know, I, was, I was wondering if you're going to go there. Uh, my light. No music. Wait, what, what did you, what was I going to say? Yeah. I think you're going to say what, that this should have been in tears of the kingdom. Yeah. This should have been the depths music from tears of the kingdom. Yeah. I think this just listen, tell me that this doesn't just sound like the depths right here. This would have made the depths so spooky. No, it's great. No, it's really great. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, dude. Like... Yeah, that... It's just... It's a banger. Really banger after banger after banger. We were talking the other day about how Breath of the Wild has one banger in it, and that's the Guardian theme. Yeah. I just listed like eight bangers. You did. And we could keep going. Oh, oh, why not? Why not? What else you got? I got, how about the the mini boss battle music? Twilight, Princess, oh, I don't mini remember that boss. One. Oh, you will. Hear this. Check this out. Uh, I think it might be Dark Nut. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do this one. Nope, that's not it. Um, you can tell it's still it's... Maybe this one? Let's try this. Oh, yeah! Yeah! This is great mini boss music. Anyway. Yeah, that's a really good yeah. mini boss music. Another banger. Another banger. I showed this in high school. I showed this once to some kids at band. And yeah. I was like... Um, do you remember when we did Climb? Barely. Junior year. I showed some kids this in band, and I said, this is what we should have done instead of Climb. Was it the Machu Picchu music? Yeah. I actually like the Machu Picchu music. Only the oh, I mean, it, it was it was all right. I, but I, I was like, this. Oh, yeah, but do you like it more than this? No! God, no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying this is what we should have done instead. Yeah, that would have so, been great. Okay. Anyway, banger after banger on that one. All right. I'm going to bring up the final topic. All right, go ahead. Are you ready? Yeah. The Cave of Ordeals. Oh, dude. The Cave of Ordeals. This game had everything that it you could ever want. It had everything. This game had I lied. Everything. I'm bringing up one other thing. All right, go ahead. The recurring uh, Moblin boss, King Bulbin. Dude, I'll do you one better. 
The hero's shade. The hero's shade? Yes. Yes. The hero's shade, the recurring uh, King Bulbin, how he yeah, spoke at the end. Oh, bro. How this man was your enemy from day one, and then at the very end, he's like, dude, you are better than me. King Bulbin had the best... He, he produced the best hero shot of any Zelda game. King, I cannot spell. King Bulbin. What do you mean hero shot? I'll show you. I'm showing you right now, bro. Oh, yeah. This yep, one. that one right there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I know exactly which one it was. That was it in the thumbnail. Yep. That's the one. Here, let me pull it up. They also do it in the title. This one right here. I just got chills, bro. Like, yeah, me too. <laughs> this game is great. Yeah, so did I. Oh, okay. wait, hold on. Oh. Hold on. Oh. Are we going to watch this? While we're here. She got yoked. Bro, he is mad. He is. He's like, Yo. you're, he's like, you're not gonna beat me. And the way her face when she when he does this, when he when he pulls it out is is like it's like all oh, like, dude, you really she are is, the hero. She's like, oh man, maybe I'm not in charge here. Yeah. Maybe you're in charge. Yeah, I mean, it's like, whoa, you you really are like good. Yeah, her face in a second. Yeah, she's her like, face wow. in a second. Yeah. <laughs> Look at her face, dude. Yeah, bro. She's shocked. She's in disbelief right she now. She cannot believe what she just witnessed. Yeah, she's like, did I really just find... Like, of all the people to rescue from that prison cell 40 days, like a month ago... It was you. Right? I, I, I you. picked the right guy. I picked the <laughs> best possible guy for this. Yeah. I hired the best possible employee. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, wow, and, I can't believe this. And then this game had to take it one step further. Like, look at, look at this Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity scene right here they're like oh you know this one has an ex has a second fanfare after the fanfare of it does accepting the sword yeah which is i'm about to play yeah in case you didn't know no 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 keep going I thought in that cutscene he did the whoosh, 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 shing. Dude, By the way, the fact good. that the game has a taunt after you kill an enemy is fantastic. They, sh they should have had that in every game after that this. That should have been bro. in every game after this. It's such Why a was... disappointment. That is one of the best parts of the game. Since we're just talking about it, let's just talk about how the game, it's such a small detail, but it's such a good detail. When Link runs and then you want to switch directions on a dime, He'll do a little slide animation and then turn around. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll like, yeah. Like you'll, yeah. you're shh. And then he'll, he'll turn around and he'll be like, all right, time to go this way now. Yeah. Like, it's just such a small detail that for no reason they put in. And I'm so glad they did. It's fantastic. Well, they had a reason, which was that's true to life. People don't, people don't turn around 180 on a dime. Right. They, and so he slid. And even when you do it as Wolf Link too, it's great. Okay, now let's talk about the Cave of Wood deals. What a great, fantastic thing. You get through this challenging thing that, in reality, you can go into, much like the Temple of the Ocean King, several times. Yeah, sorry, say that again? 
Uh, in the Cave of War deals, you can yeah. go in several times, just like the ocean, it, Temple of the Ocean King. That's true. In practice, I did it all in one fell swoop. I did it all in one swoop at the end as well, but you didn't have to. If you wanted to, you could go in, get your reward at 10, yeah, and then leave, go get your next item, come back, do, your, do it the 10 to 20, leave, 30, 40, and then 50. Yeah. You could do it over and over again. And then let's talk about the last floor. Where it's got the three, double dark nuts. Three oh, yeah, triple dark, dark nuts. nuts. Bro. And that was nuts. That was insane. That was three did, dark nuts. Did you just say that was nuts on a triple dark <laughs> I did. It was not intended. I did. It was it was unbelievable. Three we have been talking nuts. about this game. We've been talking about this game for an hour. Yeah, and do you know what is going to be done because that we've been talking about this game for an hour? Do you know what I'm going to do? What are you going to do? Number one on the list. Yep. You, Dude, I would have given you shit if you did not put this at number it one. It is number one on the list. I'd have been like, how can you talk about this for an hour? It is number and one on the list. put it beneath Ocarina or Majora. Like, I how can't, can you do that? I can't. No, no. You can't, bro. Like it's it is too, number this game had one it. on the list. And look at this list. Look at what people are going to complain about. Ocarina, Majora, Tears of the Kingdom, Skyward Sword. Look at what people are going to complain about. What are they going to say? I don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's right. I sat That's here right. and I talked about this game for an hour. I brought up... It, and I could keep going. Oh, you both... We both... We can't. We have, I, to, we have to move on. We could keep going. We, we... This game was... We didn't even talk about the items yet. Water bombs. Bomb arrows. With the way you combine bombs and arrows to make bomb arrows. Fantastic. You could go kill choo-choo jellies and then get their stuff Pick, for potions. Scoop their stuff and then drink it. And it would yeah, have various effects. if you got a golden chew jelly, bro? Yes! Do you know what the gold chew jelly did? It was like invincible. Like, I, don't, I actually don't remember. It was. No, you're right. Invincibility for a short period? Yeah, 30 seconds. That's pretty good. And it healed you to full health. Dude. If you go down to the Cave of Ordeals with Golden Chew Jelly, you are set. Dude. You are set. This game had... I mean, it had secrets. It had secrets... I mean, you had, could go to secret grotto, grottos and like dig it up just like an ocarina. It had story. I mean, this the map is huge. I mean, the, if you were trying to the world walk around, was humongous. It would take you like forever to walk around Hyrule Field. It would it takes you so long. That's why they gave you the horse at the beginning. Yeah. It was fantastic. It was the it, mailman. The mailman. <laughs> The mail, it, dude. The mailman is great, dude. Other games would be like, "Here's your mail. It's in a mailbox." Right. And this game was like, "Let me have a man, a goofy looking, a goofy looking, weird sound, with a funny, with a funny soundtrack, and the way he ran, and was the way all... he ran, it was fantastic." <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. The fact and, that oh, we dude, know this man and, and what he sounds you... like is is not good. That, that... When he handed you a letter, you may not have noticed this. When he ba -ba -ba. handed you a letter, he would hum ba -ba 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 -ba. a Zelda achievement sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're like, that's a nice little detail. That game, Twilight Princess, I literally took the music of opening a big chest and set that as my phone ringtone. And I had it for years. I remember that. Dude, you know what else you had for years? When you 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 had a wallpaper for for when we did back in time glitch. Oh oh, you mean uh, a wallpaper that's still your wallpaper? Let's see. Uh, let me just real still quick. Your, is it still your wallpaper? No, it's not my wallpaper anymore. But uh, I'm gonna send you something. Let me uh, just give me give me a second here. I can I I love that we took a picture to commemorate the moment. It was a big day. It was a like, big day. Because I heard about back in time, like, on the like on the ancient internet, and I was like, this is not real. And we were like, let's try it. Yeah, and we, and were we sat there working for, on it. like, a couple hours. I want to say maybe, like, two or three hours trying yeah. to get it to work. 
And then when we finally got it to work, because this is, I mean, the internet was not a reliable source of information back then. Right. It was and not. Honestly, honestly, probably isn't now, but regardless. It's a little like, more now yeah, that is than more reliable it was back now, then, but, but yeah. You know, because you have stuff like Zelda Dungeon and whatnot, but like, like back then, if you heard a rumor on the internet, it could be completely false. And so if you're trying something like that for three hours and you're like, this is not real. This is, we got conned. There's no fake. way. And then it finally happened and we just celebrated, man. We were like, I can't believe it. We, <laughs> this really actually. Yeah. Um, it, it's real. Like, oh my gosh, this is real. Oh, I want to find this picture because I'm going to put it on the screen. I'm going to find this picture. I feel like I'm close. <clears throat> it was it it was it was an exciting day when we figured that out and actually got it. And then we walked around and messed around. Yeah, we explored around. that area. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was like a liminal space. It's like we went to the back rooms. It was like the back rooms. And then like when we were like, okay, we're gonna jump off. And I, I had told you, I was like, if you press A, it's over. We're done. Yeah, the game will freeze and it's over. Yeah, and we were like, okay, we're going to save that for last. We're going to jump off the cliff and see what happens. Yeah, and I was going to so roll off the cliff. You were going to roll off the cliff, and then uh, and then it glitched right when we were there. We were, we just, I think we cheered. We did. We were like, this we is, were... we, this was, uh, it was such a fun moment. It was exactly and, what we wanted to see. I mean, a week, it was core memory unlocked right there. For sure. And as soon as, there it is. There's the picture. Send found it. to Discord. Send to... Let's send it to um. Let's send it. Let's send it to. Let's send it to Oinky Piggy. He probably hasn't seen it. Done. Send it to Oinky Piggy. Done. There it is. There it is. Let me open the picture and move. Open in browser. Sure. No. What are you doing? Open in browser. Sure. There it is. There it is. Bro. There it is. There's the picture. Dude, there I am. That's like. Oh. That's like like. Dude, 12, you are maybe you're, thirteen. First of all, you're a me. literal child. Yeah. yeah you're that, probably like. That's twelve. I think maybe, maybe even. Maybe thirteen Probably year old younger. me right there. Maybe a little... I think younger than that. Actually. Really? You know what? This picture has a date. Oh, does it? It does. Let me see. Uh details. Uh January fifth, twenty thirteen. Taken on an Apple iPad too. That is not correct. Twenty thirteen would have been you would have been fifteen. I believe that's what I would look like when I was fifteen. I would believe uh, that. I'll... Well, yeah, that is what you looked like when you were 15. But it that was not this was not taken when you were 15. This was younger than that. Let's see, January 5th, 2013. Probably 16, you actually. got it off of You yeah, you were not 16 in this photo. Probably no. what happened was you got I think this photo was this, taken with my old my like my first phone ever. Well, sometimes when you send one photo a photo file from one device to another device, sometimes the device will overwrite. I think that's what the, happened capture date to the received date um that happens especially for older tech that happens quite frequently i think that's so what happened. that probably that's probably what happened yeah um look I dude would, it's 11 was... it's 11 29 p.m yeah we were working on it late bro we were yeah. cooking yeah we, 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 had, we had work <laughs> we were, to do we were, we were cooking in the lab bro yeah man oh man crazy to think that nothing in this photo is still there that is correct. Absolutely nothing in that photo is still there. Except, I do have this TV. It's right there. Oh, you just pointed at it in real life? Yeah. It's right there. It's on camera. Here, well, I'll show you. Well, you know what that means. If you still have the photo, you know what that means, right? That or I could recreate it? You could recreate this image. I could recreate this image. Here, can you see uh, my webcam? Uh, I cannot. It's loading still. Oh, it's going to load because second. it's on. No, it's going to load because it's on. I'm using the webcam on. Uh, Don't worry about it. I'll screen. see it later in the video. I'll see it later in the video. Unacceptable. I will show it to you right now. I have a second webcam. Okay. 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 I have to... Unacceptable. Unacceptable. You must see it. I would like to move on to another game. Uh, so let's wrap this up. We've talked extensively about. Yeah, we have. And, and for good reason. We've talked extensively about this one. Okay. It has decided not to load, so. 
Okay. It will just be the way that it is. I'm going to just change the setting back real quick before I forget. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. All right. We knew that one was going to be a big one when it showed up. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we knew. Did, we knew it was going to be big. I gasped. I gasped. I literally, when I saw it approaching, I said, oh, no. We knew We knew it was going to be a big one. All right, here we go. This is where we're going to yeah. get tingle. We're going to be done with it in all five right. seconds. Close enough. Close enough. Do you ever, I know for a fact you never this. played this game. Not only have I not played it, I'm not going to. That's a good choice. Uh, and I'm going to put it uh, above Faces of Evil, but below Crossbow Training. Okay, I have played it. I've beaten it. Um, uh, this game was not good. This game was bad. Uh, F tier? Uh, uh, yeah, it, it was bad. It's a complete game, so take that for what it is. Um... Some of the bosses were fun if you were probably playing with more than one person like you were supposed to, but uh, I didn't, so I couldn't. Um, yeah, the game was it, the game was not good. I would rather play Four Swords Adventures than play this one again. Oh, bottom of the barrel. it is on the bottom of the list. This game was really bad, in my opinion. Oof, I did not that enjoy is... it. It was that's a rough, buddy. Yeah, it was it was bad. I spent money on it, and I wish I didn't. Oh, that that is, that is tough criticism. It was it was really bad. I played as a solo player. The game is intended for three people. But that being said, you can play it solo. Um, I just wouldn't recommend you play the game at all. The story all right. has nothing to do with anything. It's just not good. All right. All right. Next. Give me tingle. No, darn it. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Echoes All right. of Wisdom. I have not played it, okay. but it is brand new. It is brand new. So I'm putting it in unplayed. Okay. And within unplayed, I'm actually going to put it second after Majora because I, and I might actually put it above Majora, not because I like this game more than Majora. I think I'm going to like Majora more, but... Oh. Actually, yeah, I am going to put it at the top because it's new and I'm excited to see the new. Majora will always be there and frankly, so will Echoes of Wisdom. But um, I have not been spoiled for this game yet. And so I don't know how it ends. And so there's a limited window before I do. And so I'm excited to play this. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I have played it. I have not... What happened? Where's my... I have not... Fit where it happened to the game. Oh, I never moved it. Yeah, I have not finished it, so it's going in the have not finished category, and I will finish it before I play Minish Cap. So, I have not finished it. I have done. I really liked the game from what I've played so far. I think it's got one of the best uh, mechanics that we have yep. seen in terms of creativity. The echoes. Yeah, the echoes. You can be so creative with these echoes. It's ridiculous. Like, I have found ways to do things using the echoes. And, of course, I have. Of Me, of all people, who can never do anything the right way. I have found so many ways to do things the wrong way in this game. Using these echoes. That it's just... Amazing that the game lets me even do that. I think that's kind of the intention. They're it like, is. You know... There is a right way to do this, but there's also 700 wrong ways. Yeah. And we don't care if you do them wrong. Yeah, it is. And it's great. That's, I, I, I that's have the vibe I get. I have, I have enjoyed my time playing the game. That being said, most of my time in the game, I have spent exploring the world and not doing the main objective, which is so unlike me. Because this game allows you to do it, in my opinion, different than Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom did. Even though it's pretty much the same, where you are, you have your tutorial, right? Your great plateau, and then you, it's like, okay, go be free, and it's like, you sure you have an objective on your map? Go over this way, right? You have a, you know, you have your objective, but it's like, in Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, yeah, you can just do that whenever, whenever you feel like it, you know. Uh, it's the same way in this game, for the most part, from what I've gotten anyway, and 
uh, for a 2D game, I, it was beyond unique. I mean, we haven't seen that in a 2D game since uh, Zelda 1. <laughs> or Link to the Past, probably. No, not but... even in Link to the Past. Well, well that's yeah, okay. pretty high praise. Yeah, a little bit in a Link to the Past. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. I've enjoyed my time playing it. I'm not done with it. I don't know how the rest of the story is going to go out at all. But, uh, yeah, I haven't finished it yet. But I've enjoyed what i played so far. Okay. Age of Calamity. You want to go first or you want me to go first? Um, I'll go first. I played the demo that they released. Um, so I haven't finished it. I did play the demo, which was the first, uh, I don't know, like two, three missions or something. It was... It was fun. It was interesting. It was very unique seeing, you know, 45 Boko Blins coming at me at once. Uh, I didn't get really far enough to discuss much else. Yeah. <clears throat> I So, I know the story of this game. Uh, I was spoiled for it. Hmm. Do you know the story for this game? No. Okay, then I will keep my mouth shut. But... Uh, I have no problem playing this game. I haven't played it myself. I don't have a problem playing this game. However, it's going pretty deep in the back burner. I would put this uh, probably here. Um, I am more interested in playing Adventures of Link, even if it's tough. I'm more interested in playing that because this one's canon. Now you could say, but Zach, these two are canon too. And I'm like, yeah, but this is Breath of the Wild Link. So sure. Yeah. I'm more. I'm more. I'm just more interested in that right. than I am in these guys. Uh, but it takes points off for not even being a canon game. It does. So it, it. You know. I. It seems interesting enough that I'm willing to play it. It's not. It's definitely not Cadence of Hyrule. I did. It, I did enjoy the beginning where you kind of uh, travel yeah. back in time to before Breath of the Wild happened. Yeah. It was interesting. It was interesting. It started out, you know, the game pretty much started out just like Breath of the Wild did. And then it's like, haha, yeah. psych! Yeah, sure. It was interesting. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Man, we have had not, not much to say since Twilight Princess. Yeah. I mean, I knew it was going to happen that way. Okay, so this okay, is OG this is a, Link's Awakening. This is a real this game. Is not the, this is not the remake. It is. So, am I first or are you first? I guess it's me, huh? I think it is you. I also haven't played this game. But, I because Link's Awakening Remake exists, I will never play this game. I will always defer to the remake. Because the remake is made in a higher quality art style. Again, you can't judge a game by based on its graphics. Sorry, guys. But... You know, this has a better quality art style. It's it's on a platform that I actually own, which is the Switch. The Link's Awakening is on, I think, the, one of the Game Boys. It is. Link's Awakening. It's Game Boy Bits. Uh, the original. This is not the original. It is not. Um, Game here Boy. We go. Yeah, Game Boy. I don't own a, I don't own a working Game Boy. Uh, I don't think I've ever owned a Game Boy. Actually, I think. Uh, I've only had my first handheld was a DS, so I got a Game uh, Boy Advance. No, that's not true. That's not true. I I had a, I don't remember what I've had. Anyway, long story short, uh, I own a Switch, and so I'd rather buy Link's Awakening remake for the Switch than to emulate this game. Uh, when I can just have a game that's like supported on the Switch and like it's portable, I don't have to play it on my PC and all that kind of stuff. And sure, I could go to a retro game store and all that kind of stuff. So, um. But I just, I see the comparison between Link's Awakening and Link's Awakening Remake. This is weird, because this is like one of these pair games, but the the time difference in these pairs is pretty big. Um, so, you know, I I don't think I'm going to play this. I think if I play Link's Awakening, it's going to be the remake version. Um, so I'm actually going to put this in won't play, and funny enough, 
because I'm going to play Link's Awakening Remake, I'm actually going to put this pretty far down. I'm going to put this below the CDI games because there might be a day. This is probably not going to happen <laughs> because I'm a very busy man. But there might come a day where I'm interested in trying out the CDI games after I've tried out all of these games. Um, because uh, just wanting to know the what's up with these games. But Link's Awakening, I've already played it. If, I, if I've gotten through all of these and I've played this, then I really don't need to play that one. Um, so that's that's my take on it. Okay. Fair enough. Nothing but, um, lo- nothing, nothing but love for the first Link's Awakening. But, um, yeah. I have never played the original Link's Awakening. Um, I own the remaster. I've played it. Um, I won't say I won't play the original. Um, but I haven't, and I don't have any intentions to. I don't know if it's yeah, any it's different. Not your, it's not on your list. Yeah, I don't know if it's any different than the remake. I don't know what the remake did different, if anything. Um, but I have played the remake. I would suggest you probably just play the remake. <laughs> yeah, if, if this game didn't have a remake, I still probably would have put it in won't play. Because it's pretty deep on the back burner. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, um, the whole game, I don't know if you know anything about the story of this game. But, you awaken uh, a wind fish. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the, the game is a dream. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's, so it's kind of like Phantom Hourglass in that respect. Yeah. Which is uh, fine. I'm fine with that. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it, was still, it was still fun, but uh, it's still, it, it was a 2D a, a Zelda dream? game from... You know, Majora's Mask and Phantom Hourglass kind of fall in the same category as Link's Awakening, where it's like, it didn't really affect the overall plot of the main storyline, but it's still canon. It's not like Age of Calamity. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I just, I have no intentions to play Link's Awakening. I won't say I won't ever play it, but I, it's, it's not on the list. Like, at all. This wheel is getting pretty thin. It is, yeah. Uh-oh. 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 Oh! oh, oh, oh <laughs> there's no way, bro. That is razor thin. Dude. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Okay. What was that? I didn't even pay attention. Hyrule Warriors. Hyrule first... Warriors. Okay. Yeah. Um, All right. Do you, do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. I haven't played it. I have no intentions of playing it. I would rather play Link's Awakening. Nah, that's not true. I've never played it. Um, I have no intentions of playing it. I don't care. I think the art style is very strange. For a Zelda yes. game. It's very weird. It's like they try to make it like a like a like a cartoon. Like a TV show. It's very strange. Um yeah. I don't know anything about the story. I don't really care. I know there's got a whole hodgepodge of characters from this game and that game and every game so <laughs> yeah so this game is like a black sheep in this franchise because this game was not made by nintendo it wasn't no it was so hyrule warriors is like um there's a whole different franchise uh that does like fighting action games and this hyrule warriors was like a crossover with that franchise really where the whole intention was let's make a game of that series but let's make it zelda themed and let's get the licensing for that and let's make it happen so the game so the gameplay is exclusively dictated by Mm -hmm. that game series and i don't even remember the name of the series on top of my head but they took that and they just said let's just make instead of playing as our characters let's just play as link or hmm. Zelda, or whoever. Interesting. Um, yeah, technically, this is the first game you play as. Well, actually, a Wand of Gamelon, you play as Zelda. But <laughs> you know, uh, this game you do play. You can play as Zelda in at least one spot here. Um, the sequel to this is Age of Calamity. Yeah. Uh, I did know so that. these are a pair game here, uh, which is weird because neither of these games are canon. Um, this game has like multiverse. Yeah. Themes. Yeah. At least Age of Calamity was like in the Breath of the Wild engine. Yeah. Well, actually, not really. It had the same art style, but it was not the same engine. Oh well, it looked a lot like Breath of the Wild. So. It was. They used the same. They used the same 
models and stuff but well that's good because it's a lot better than whatever the heck i'm looking at yeah this game it was like that's pretty boy link that's what that is yeah this game i mean midna's in it and fee and other characters that like it's a weird game it's a weird game a weird i'm game. gonna put this in won't play it's more interesting than Triforce Heroes, so I'm gonna put it above Triforce Heroes. But I'd rather play Crossbow Training. <laughs> that's that's a good choice. Yeah, I think that's a good choice. My won't play is getting kind of long. Yeah, well, it's not. It's well, you know, the CDI games exist. Yeah. Of no fault of our own, the CDI games exist. Oh, speaking of CDI games, oh. <laughs> Tingle. Finally, it's Tingle. The last Tingle. Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land. All right. I will not play this game. However, if there is a game I'm going to play, it's going to be Tingle at the top. For sure. For real? For sure. Absolutely, I'm going to play one with Tingle. I'm not playing this. I'm going to put it over with the other Tingles, but where do I put it within the Tingles is what I'm wondering. Uh, I would um, probably put it either at the top or in the middle. So here's the thing. It's called Rosy Rupee Land, so sure. I'm judging a book by its cover here. You are. But it kind of sounds like a Wario game, and I kind of like that, because okay. I kind of like Wario. All right. So, yeah, I'll put it at the top of the Tinkle one. All right, there you go. There you go. I'm glad we are done with that. Next. These are all real games now, right? Uh, Nearly, yeah. Yeah, yeah they are. All right. Uh, Link to the Past. Link to the Past. We crossed the threshold on this one. Okay. So I have not played a link to the past, but I definitely would love to. Um, so I'm gonna put it in my unplayed tier. Within this, I want to play it more than Age of Calamity, but I don't want to play it more than Majora's Mask. So that kind of leaves it. Do I want to play it more than Link's Awakening? Or sorry, more than Adventure of Link or less than Adventure of Link. And honestly, I'd rather play Adventure of Link first. Not because I think Adventure of Link is better. I actually think A Link to the Past would be a better game. But because Adventure of Link is different. Adventure of Link is, one, it's canon. Two, it is relevant to the history of the franchise. Three, well, it has lore. A Link to the Past is canon. Yes. But I'm just highlighting all the positive. Oh, I see. I see. Really, the main point that I'm trying to get at is that the gameplay for a link for Adventure of Link is not the same as any of the other games. It's no, it's completely scroller. different. It's completely different. And I have, you know, if I've played Echoes of Wisdom and Link's Awakening remake, then and I've played Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, these are all top-down 2D Zeldas. Yeah. Um, a Link to the Past is a top-down 2D Zelda. It so, is. sure, it might be the best of these. I'll find out. But, you know, it, there's a... there's a People might say that this is an A-tier game. I've heard a lot of people say this is an A-tier game. Sure. And maybe if I end up playing this game, I will put it in A-tier. But I think it's so similar to the rest of these. A lot of these guys have just copied the formula. I, I gestured towards Legend of Zelda like he did that. Um, you know, Link's yeah. Awakening Remake has copied the formula for A Link to the Past. Yeah. Um. I think the Link Between Worlds did the same thing. Um, I think the Oracle games did the same thing. So, you know, they, they capitalized off of this one's success. So, you know, but despite all of that, Adventure of Link has a gameplay that I have not seen before. And it I won't see again. so different. You'll and never see it again. It's, and because it's different, it's novel. And because it's novel, I'm more interested. That's fair. So I'm going to put it, I'm gonna put it below. So that's I'm fair. Go, that's that's where I'm putting a link to the past. That's that's right fair. in the right in the middle of my unplayed tier. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, I have played it. I have beaten it. Uh, to my knowledge, I think I either got real close to 100 percent or 100 percent in it. Uh, but I have beaten it. I have played it all. And this game, a link to the past, set you have the not 100 percent in it. Why not? Because this game has the worst heart piece in Zelda history, and you have not gotten that heart piece. How do you know? Because I would well, know. I don't. You would be talking about it right now. If, okay. If you if you got that heart piece, you would be you would be talking about it right now, being like, 
in here. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, yeah. so I guess I haven't hundred percent it, but I have beaten it. All right. Um, I, I got a lot of hearts. I guess I didn't get all of them. Um, it set the background for every game afterwards. Like this was the formula for every game up until Breath of the Wild. It yes. was the formula. Yeah, um, so, so, so it, it, it is, it's on par with being just as important as, in my opinion, Legend of Zelda one. I agree. Because it simply set the stage for the franchise. Yes. I honestly think it set the stage for the franchise more than the original did. I think so too, because the games are more similar to Link to the Past than they are to the OG. Correct. A Link to the Past had, uh, seven, I think, dungeons. And it had, the amount. yeah, it was it was good. It had seven dungeons. Um, none of them were easy. <laughs> none of them were easy. None of the two D games are easy. At least the old ones back in the days. None of them are easy. Um, the game had some of the most annoying enemies, but that's all two D games. So uh, the story was fairly cookie cutter, but back in the day, that was you know brand new. Um, it had the Master Sword. The first time you ever had the Master Sword. Yeah, this game introduced the Master Sword. It did. And it was pretty good. Uh, the world was fairly open, as long as you had enough uh, brains or uh, some, you know, some easier equipment later on. It was fairly open. Um, I believe the dungeons could be done in select orders, not any order, but select orders. And by that I mean you could do this one or this one, or or separately this one or this one. But uh, you couldn't just do like dungeon seven right off the bat. You had to get through one or two, and then three or four, and then to be able to do like later ones. I think. Um, it was it was it was fairly good. It was it, it introduced you know the whole pretty much the whole game so I'm gonna put it at uh, I'm actually gonna put it above uh, regular Legend of Zelda and I'm gonna put it uh, at the top of C tier. Fair enough. I think that's a worthy placement. I think it's a very worthy spot. I, I feel like it's uh, just like the regular Legend of Zelda. You know you can't put it at F tier, but you can't put it in S tier. Yeah. It's right in the middle. Yeah. It's right in the middle. Which, in fact, it, which in fact, I think is... I've changed my opinion. I'm putting it at the bottom of B tier. It's better. There you go. It's better than some of these other games, but it's not. It's it's not superb. Yeah, I think B tier is. I'm gonna put it at the. Well I'm gonna put it in B tier. Bottom of B tier. I think. I think at the time that this game was released, this would have been the best Zelda yet. Oh, it was for sure. Yeah. And, and clearly, by your tier list, that shows. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was yeah. the best Zelda game of all time at that time. Yeah. There was and people, no and people compared. People were like, this game is so much better than the original and all that people, kind of stuff. People people today compare a link to the past to Ocarina of Time. Yeah. I agree. Like people today do that. But there are people yeah. who would put a link to the past above Ocarina of Time. Because yeah. they played it back then and it was that good. Yeah. I disagree. I personally think the 2D Zelda games, and I've played a chunk of them, I personally think they are not as good as any of the 3D games. Uh, that being said, they're not bad. I, th I think that's probably has to do with just how games get better over time. Like, I the agree. The problem with 2D that really bothers me is the hit boxes are really bad in the 2D games. <clears throat> sure. So that's the problem that bugs me the most out of anything else. I don't care that it's 2D. I don't care that it's top down. I care about the hit boxes. Okay. Like there are things that I think I should be hitting you and I don't think you should be hitting me, but yet neither here we are. But but like here we are. <laughs> You're hitting me anyway and I'm not hitting you. And I'll <laughs> call BS really on it every day. That. The yeah. first Zelda really has a hard time with that one. And you know why? It's a 2D, top-down. Top and down they were and they were perfecting the formula still. I will tell you, Echoes of Wisdom 
I will think is the best 2D game they have ever made. And I think that okay. I think that is good. It fixes a lot of the things that I think were bad. <laughs> yeah. It fixes a lot of the things that I think were bad. Sure. But yeah, there you go. I think I think it's uh, in B tier. You know, it introduced a whole lot. Did you Did you go? Yes, I put it in the middle of unplayed. Ah, right. I didn't remember. That's okay. Why don't you go first for this one? Okay. I think I have to actually. All right, Oracle of Seasons and Ages. Have you um, played both of them? I have played partially one. I played parts of Oracle of Seasons. You didn't sound sure. I, I had to think <laughs> about it. I played part of Oracles of Seasons. I probably got maybe halfway, maybe a little more than halfway through. I played it on the channel. Um, it was okay. I didn't love it. I didn't love it. Yeah, it was another 2D scrolling game. Yep. Had the, suffers the same issues as all the others. Um, yep. I will say this one is unique in that you change... Uh, well, I can only talk about Seasons because that's the one I played. Um, in Seasons, you changed the Seasons with a magic wand that would uh, allow you to change more Seasons as you progress through the game. And it was interesting, uh, being able to change the seasons, and really the game has four worlds, and each world is different in every season. Okay. And so, it, it's really unique in that in that aspect, where the game has four different worlds, and, and each season has different things happening. Like, there are flowers that will only bloom in spring, and they actually are springs that you can step on, and it will jump you, bounce you up to a higher platform. So uh, that's one of the things that was in spring. In in uh, in winter, there are snow walls that you cannot get through. You have to find another way around. Or later on, you get the shovel. You can kind of dig your way through some of the walls of snow. Uh, summer is your most basic. It's your it's like your default. And then fall, there are certain trees that die in fall, and you can't get through because they're just dead dead wood. Or, uh, the opposite, in fall, sometimes there are mushroom trees that will bloom. And you can, like, cut them down, or they'll, like, open a new path for you. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really got four different worlds. It's interesting. Uh, I haven't finished it. I probably won't finish it. And that's all I have to say about it. There we go. All right. Uh, for me, I haven't played it. Um, don't have any intention of playing it right now, but that doesn't mean I won't ever. It's not like Balloon Trip of Love. <laughs> so I'm going to put it in the Unplayed, and I'm actually going to put it at the bottom of Unplayed. Um, I don't think I will ever have time to play this game. I, I think... I mean, I'm struggling just to get through Ocarina of Time. You are. And I have Tears of the Kingdom to play. I've got Echoes of Wisdom to play. I have Majora's Mask. There are a couple of these that I want to play later. But, so this guy's going at the back. And I'm probably never going to play it. Because I think life, as well as other things, are going to get in the way. So, but, you know, I'm not holding out hope. Or I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not holding out hope. Wait, am I saying that right? I think so. Okay. He's still on here. He, I, I haven't shut him out. Right. It's possible. Yeah. All right. Next up, we got... No, I wanted that to be the last. Or one of the last ones. Really? Yeah. Dude, I'm, honestly, I'm shocked that Breath of the Wild is still not done. Yet. I know, right? It's right. What if it's the last one? Well, what a way to wrap it up, I say. Yeah. All right. So we got Wind Waker. All right. So I have you. Someone could tell me. Technically, I have not played this game because right. it is true to say that I right. did, when we did it in high school, I wasn't holding the controller. Correct. But to say that would also say that I haven't played The Walking Dead, 
or the Wolf of Among Us. And right. but it just don't feel right. It's it's not right. You were there for the entirety of the game. Yeah, you, it, you, we were playing. You know, it was we played co-op with one controller. That's yeah. what happened. Yeah. So you know, I've seen, I've I've did the dungeons. I did the Cave of Trials or the Cave of Ordeals, like you know their version of it. Mm-hmm. I did you know the dungeons. I did the lore, the story. Yep. The music. The boss fights. The the music. You know, so I would consider. You know, I was there. I was there. So. It's just like Undertale or Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, I'm sure, sure I didn't play I it. Didn't Markiplier play it. did. Markiplier or Jack did. Right. But, you know, I didn't like, play it, but I was there. I know everything. Yeah. So, yeah. So I can rate this game. I I'm was there on the I'm journey. My, I have to. I have to qualify that and give myself permission to say that I'm allowed to rate this game. I think that's a good choice. Um. I like this game. Yeah. I think okay. this is a great game. Okay. I think that this game. I think the art style is timeless. Um, I agree. I think that there. I think. I think this, this game, game still will, looks good. I I agree because it did cell shading. It did. It, they decided that, um, that they were going to go with an art style that really doesn't age. Um, you look at Zelda one and you're like, "Ooh, man, that is an <laughs> old game." Yeah, <laughs> you know, and you. Yeah, and you can look back at Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess, and you're like, mm, they're old. Ocarina of Time looks old. Uh, no Twilight Princess, it, you know, when it got the HD remake, we were like, oh, thank God. <laughs> but you look back at those textures, and you're like, mm, that water doesn't look as good as I remember it in 2006. Um, but you look at Wind Waker, and you're like, that water still looks pretty good. But not for the same reason, because Twilight well, Princess kind of went for a more realistic art style. But Wind Waker went for a cartoonish art style, and therefore it suffers a lot less from age. Age. Thank you. So, but again, I'm not grading this on graphics. I think that there's a lot of things that this game did right. Um, I think that the lore of the time travel and the timelines and how it all got messed up in Ocarina of Time. I really like that trope. I really like the idea that this is a unique uh, game among the franchise in terms of the world. This is a this is a water game. Um, the only other game that does that is Phantom Hourglass, and Wind Waker does fan- Wind Waker does it better. Wind Waker does the water world better than Phantom Hourglass did, um, probably because it was. A console game. If Phantom was a it was. 2D top-down game on a on a handheld device. I will also add in that uh, why Wind Waker was better would be yep. because the world was continuous, whereas yes. in uh, Phantom Hourglass, you know, you'd pull up to an island and you'd go into a loading screen. Yeah, a cutscene really. Up yeah, there. yeah, yeah. And in uh, Wind Waker, when you would pull up to an island, you could just get out your boat and swim over there. Like that island yeah. is loaded in, and and you are there. There are people there. If there are people there, there are things to do on this island. You didn't have to go through a loading screen. It was it was already yeah. there. Yeah, this game, I think, this game is a textbook. I think this game will be studied for years just as it already has it'll be studied for many many years for its technical achievements especially the lack of loading screens um at a time when they because what shigeru miyamoto and satoru iwata and uh eiji onuma the big three at nintendo at the time uh rip satoru iwata um but you know eiji onuma and shigeru those guys they were basically saying how can we make a Zelda game that has no loading screens. How can we make this seamless? And they really brainstormed about it, and the tech wasn't there yet. Breath of the Wild would be the first game that really had the tech for it. Um, yeah, yeah. So Does Breath of the Wild have any they, loading screens? Uh, no, it doesn't have... Oh, yes, actually, it has a loading screens when you enter shrines. That's right, yeah, and come out of shrines. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Um, and then it plays cutscenes when you leave 
and enter bosses or uh, dungeons. But I think that's less to do with the technical aspects and more to do with the story. Yeah, I agree. I think um, they just want to make it look good. Yeah, I think they I think they wanted to have a cutscene there rather than I mean, they could have I, th I think they could have you could leave. I have a feeling that they would let you leave the dungeon without a loading screen, but they just wanted to show a cutscene anyway. But with Wind Waker, they said, you know, the tech wasn't there yet. And so they tried they tried to figure out what to do with that. And they decided that the answer was, well, we're going to put a lot of distance in so we can have time to render this stuff um, on the high. While you're traveling on the ocean, that'll give us time in the background to load uh, the place that you're trying to go to and unload the place that you're leaving. Um, and it's a, it's a really nice little magic trick there. And I think that's quite the technical achievement really creative at the time. Um, and they really solved the problem that they were trying to, that they were trying to address. Um, the story, I, like I said, I think it's, I think it's a great story. I like the idea that, um, Link is a kid. No way fans are what's about it. Yep. This is not an adult. Yep. He is not ready to face off with the world's worst. Um, this is not Twilight Princess Link. This is not Tears of the Kingdom Link. This is not Skyward Sword Link. Um, all three of those guys... Right, he's probably uh, like 11. Yeah, all three of those guys were... I mean, they were either late teenagers or early adults. And in either case, like they were capable of and they were ready they were ready to face the face the monsters yeah um they had the comprehension this link is they did um the main plot of ocarina of time is that link was, was too young. in the same situation that wind waker link is in yeah but he was he was he wasn't ready to face the monsters so he had they had to they, that was the main point of right. the whole game they had to wait and so they had to they had to cope with that typically by by time travel Yep. So this game had a reason to show Link becoming the hero uh, who has the Triforce of Courage. Um, he had all of the right heart for for how young he was. This is probably the aside maybe Majora's Mask. It's probably the youngest Link. If 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 Wind Waker is not the youngest Link, then he's probably number two after Majora's Mask Link. I'll but I think. I think I think Wind, uh, I think Majora's Mask Link is probably the youngest other than the first kid part of Ocarina. So when you think about the, like, the, the who this Link is, is, they can't cure his adolescence with time travel because they already tried that. And we know how that went. Right. It didn't go so hot for Hyrule for about seven years. Right. It was not so good. No. And on top of that, um, they already lacked a hero to stop Ganondorf on round one. They did. In the, in, prior to the game, this game starting. So right. they had to flood Hyrule. The whole plot is they had to flood Hyrule because Link wasn't, he really wasn't ready because he wasn't even there. Right. So there was no so way to be ready. The, the the powers that be cannot risk another hey let's let this guy mature this is like you're gonna have to mature on the fly buddy uh right and because because you you know you know the world is the you know what would be a evil good is not waiting for for link to become ready to face them you know he has to face them even as a young kid yeah you know what would be a good comparison for this what's that clementine from the walking dead yeah I would say I would she was Clementine she was thrown example. into it, and by the end of the game, right, season one specifically, she was thrown into it, not ready, a literal child. And at the end of it, at the end of the game, you know, time has passed. You know, about a year and a half or so, time has passed. But she has adjusted. She's learned. She's she's picked up the the tips and the tricks on how to do things. To, to to survive in in that world and yeah. it's very similar to 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 wind waker link being so young and he has to pick up the tricks and and, and yeah. figure out how to do it yeah i think 
the spin on the big three. So we already talked about Link. Yeah. Ganondorf we've talked about in the past, and I'll go ahead and share those thoughts again on for the video for the, okay. for the listeners. But this is a Ganondorf who is a seasoned Ganondorf. This is the same Ganondorf. Lore-wise, this is the same Ganondorf who went through the entirety of Ocarina of Time and got his ass whipped at the end. And so he's a humble man now. And he realizes that he needs to be a lot more careful in his schemes. And so when this Wind Waker Link comes on the scene, he is not bashful. He's not bragging. He's not... He's not cocky. He's not cocky. He's like, I'm here on a mission. And and you can see it in the cutscenes. Yeah, yeah. I said, it, if I, can... I said it before I don't need to... when we were yeah. chatting. I said, uh, I said, this Ganondorf is all business. He's all business. This guy and I like is that. all business. This is this is a villain who does not waste his time monologue. He knows the thing that, well, he's actually seen he does too. he does monologue actually in this game he several does. times. He does. Uh, but you know you get my point. He's just he is all business. He's not here to haunt you and to say, Oh, I'm gonna like you I'm gonna, know I'm gonna crush your spirit. He's like, No, I'm just gonna kill you. Yeah, he's like I I'm not gonna try to beat around the bush here. You your predecessor demolished all of my plans yeah your, and your, your ancestor was a problem and now you are a problem yeah and i i have to deal with that and he's so much ganondorf is so he's he's actually this is weird because there's a villain who's like gone through character development yeah he has <laughs> and, uh, no really my he favorite has. my my and my favorite line in the entire game is when he's he says i coveted that wind which was uh, he's referring to like the wind of freedom that the Hylians had in Ocarina of Time. And he's talking about how reflecting on why he did what he did in Ocarina of Time and how he's he's always just been chasing the same freedoms and joy that they had, the Hylians had. Sure. Um, and they were... What's up? No, don't think... Um have any coca-cola i'll take a coke thanks my wife's kid going to the kitchen I love being married. yeah um yeah dude i i i think ganondorf was really awesome in this game um tetra what a spin on the classic damsel in distress trope right the idea that the princess is actually a pirate yeah right I think that's great. That I was think... new. That was novel. When when but... she was revealed to be Princess Zelda, I mean, she didn't even know. Right. She was she... like, bullshit. She was like, yeah, this isn't real. There's no way. And then it was like, poof, you're Zelda. And the king was like, bro, you're Zelda. I'm telling you. I know. I know a thing or two because I'm the king. Yeah, I, I, I know. I'm the king. I was there all that time ago. I I know. It's like wow, I I'm Zelda, I'm royalty. This is unusual. I feel weird. <laughs> and then at the end, when she had the decision, right, to either be Zelda or to be Tetra, she chose to be Tetra. I like that. I like that too because that's who she is. She's like, yeah, I guess I might have some royal blood or whatever, but I. I'm still me. Yeah. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. Um, I think the King of Red Lions is a pretty cool pretty cool companion. I think he's a very cool dude. He's certainly the most u- utilitarian and useful. What's that? What, what is that man's name? Is that is that King Rombos for Amos Hyrule? Oh, the, the King of Hyrule? Yeah. Uh, no, King Rombos for Amos Hyrule is the King of Breath of the Wild. Dude, that man has a powerful name. What is what's the what's the King of Red Lions' name? Let's look it up. Yeah, yeah, look it up real quick. King of Red Lions. First of all, a title like King. Look at this man's neck. Look at him. <laughs> that right King there. King of Red Lions. That's a man. His name is Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule. That's that's a na- that's a name. Yeah, it's a pretty. You see how many characters that? The, one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 characters in that man's name. He is a powerful guy. How many words? How many how many letters are in Ganondorf's name? Nine? 
Got him. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at that. Look at him. Look at his stance. His stature. Look at his belt buckle. This is a man you need to bow down to. Yes, look at him. Ooh, what is this? What's going on there? All right. Uh, here we go. That 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 right there. That is a that is a man. Look Regal. at that face. Look at him. He is also business. <laughs> That's true. That's he, true. He is. He is also business. <laughs> that is totally true, dude. Yeah, as far as companions go, this is easily the most utilitarian one. Like, he gives you the ability to traverse the oceans. And there's no other... All the other characters are like, I'm going to, like, be your your phone. I'm just going to hang out in your pocket, and then I'll come, like... You know, when you need me. I'll, yeah, I'll come up... Or when I have or, something to say. Or when I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I've... When I've when, oh, incoming phone call. But, like... The King Red Lions was like, uh, "I'm your car," and he was like smart, so he was like a, he was like your mentor too. Yeah, and you want to talk about royalty? Midna being royalty, he's the King of Red Lions. Like he's a king. He's a king. He's King Rome Boss for almost high rule before King Rome Boss. <laughs> no, he's king. Rule. He's King Daphnis. King something, Daphnis something. something high rule. He's King High Rule. Daphnis no handsome. King Daphnis like, no handsome name, Hyrule. Dude. What a name. Daphnis no handsome Hyrule. That's a name. Like, like I look at this guy and I'm like, uh, we gotta bow down. Like yeah. he's in charge. Yeah, he 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 is in charge. Yeah. Um There's a lot of good things about this game. Um it could be subjective here for my own personal experience. Well, uh, this whole thing is. Um when we did this, we did the three heart challenge. We did. And so there was an extra level of difficulty to this game that I really appreciated. And again, I don't think that was built into the game. I think that just came from the three heart challenge. It did. But um, if there was a game to do a three heart challenge, this was a great game to do a three heart challenge. It was. So I have, this is a rare game where I actually have nothing negative to say about this game. Wow. Um, I have nothing negative to say about this game. Wow. The, the only thing that I that I am not why am I not putting this number one if I have nothing negative to say about it? Well, because it's not I like it. other because I like other games more. So I'm actually going to put this as an A tier game. Okay. Um, and I'm going to put it uh, at the bottom of A tier. I think I think it's better than Phantom Hourglass in every way. Um, that's not true. I like Lineback more. Uh, Valid. Then he's the best. Uh, He's a great companion too. He is. Um, we didn't really talk about that when we got to Phantom Hourglass. But, we did not. Uh, that's okay. Um, but he, but you know, so I think Wind Waker did everything else better, aside from Lineback. I think Lineback is better than the King of Red Lions in terms of a companion. Uh, he's kind of more like a, like a Han Solo character, which is kind of fun. Um, I think Ocarina of Time. Is because it did so much more for the industry. I think it's it should be higher placed than Wind Waker. Um, Wind Waker didn't change much in the industry of of gaming, um, and uh, really there was no other game that tried to emulate and replicate its success. Um, they were like, let's try to make an ocean game. Like there wasn't really another game that did that. Phantom Hourglass. Um, no, 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 I'm not talking about Zelda. I'm talking about like oh oh total in, in the game. Yeah, in the game industry. Gotcha. Like Ocarina of Time, like the idea of like a sword and shield wielding hero who comes from humble beginnings and is here to set like a dark force and there's lots of dungeons. I see that every year. Yeah, Dark Souls. Skyrim. Sure. Heck all these all of these guys. Uh, all most of the other Zelda games. Yeah. But like a game where you're like sailing the high seas. Like really I can only think of like Assassin's Creed four. Black flag. Like has any, yeah, like has any other game kind of done the same idea? So, uh, not like it's that. Certainly, it's certainly novel. Um, but uh, this game has Ocarina of Time changed the industry in a way that Wind Waker didn't really do. Um, but there is nothing bad about this game. I don't think there's anything bad about Wind Waker. Um, a lot of people, I think Wind Waker is like the sleeper. Uh, I think people sleep on Wind Waker. Yeah. Um, I could see it. And 
yeah I, I just think people sleep on wind waker i can see it so i think it i i liked it more than i liked tears of the kingdom i liked tears of the kingdom we talked when we talked we were talking about tears of the kingdom we said a lot of positive things about it yeah um and it's fresher in the memory than wind waker was uh sure. sorry oh, goodbye okie picky um oh, he's dead Rest yeah he left um i guess we took too long it's yeah wait was he waiting up for us or something uh we were supposed to play Baldur's gate oh sorry dude it's okay um well you know tears of the kingdom it's fresher in the memory to me than wind waker is but that doesn't mean wind waker had has anything to lose on tears of the kingdom sure so i i think this is a great game i'm gonna put it in a tier just below ocarina okay well, you were saying how you couldn't think about anything bad about the game. Right? That's what mm-hmm. you were saying? Okay. I can think about something bad about the game, and it's been the one big thing that's been really irking me about the game. Okay. What, what's that? I personally believe this game's world is too big. I think it is too that, big. That is a strange criticism. I know. And I will say I think it is too big. And I'll tell you why I think that. Because I remember playing Wind Waker and going on the seas trying to get from one corner of the map to the other corner of the map and it taking like 20 minutes. And eventually you unlock fast travel, but before you get there, you have to go by boat, by wind to get there. And it takes like 25, 20, 20, 20 minutes. And it, I think that is the only problem with the game. I think it is too large for its own good. I actually You said to go from one side of the map to the other side of the map? It's only like, 20 minutes? From like one corner to the other, yeah. I'm going to... I don't think that's too big. I, I mean, do. think about the distance... Well, me... across maps on like any of these other games sure but in any of these other games there are things happening typically if there are things oh, to do on the saying. way there's there. a whole lot of nothing yeah see when i'm on the ocean and i'm just cruising you know sometimes there will be an enemy that'll show up but for the most part i'm sitting there doing nothing i don't sometimes i don't even have my hands on the controller because i'm just cruising in one direction waiting to hit this island and sure. doing nothing in the meantime. Sure. I am 100% confident that I have set a direction, put my controller down, gotten up, went to the bathroom, got some water, got a snack, came back and was still going and still had five minutes to go. Nice. And so it that is like one of my biggest complaints about this game is I think it is too large for its own good or the travel is too slow. Or there's not enough to do from point A to point B. That is also good because most of the time, you know, you're going, the whole game really is how can we get from this island to this island? It's not a matter of, oh, I have to do this thing on the ocean. And sure, there are things in the ocean yeah. that you can it's do. It's kind of like the sky in... Skyward Skyloft. Sky. Yeah, Skyloft. It's a lot like the sky. Like, I'm not doing anything. There's nothing going on. You're not doing anything in the sky. It's just from point A to point B. Exactly. That's what I feel like the ocean is like. Except I feel yeah. like it's 20 times bigger than the sky in Skyward I feel like it's yeah. humongous. Sure. Sure. And so that's one of my big downsides. Yeah, dude. I think... Um... Yeah, I think so. I actually think that what you just said was a criticism that Nintendo heard, and later on they said they they did a lot of thinking about how they could remedy that, because later on you will see in later games that there's certain like it, when you go from point A to point B, there's usually stuff along the way at regular intervals um right like what do i mean even in breath of the like, wild you go you're going from point a to point b and there's a yep. you know there's a stable here there's a shrine here there's a shrine here there's a monster camp yeah there's a mini boss there's a korok seed sure you know there's, there's stuff. a chest there's a chest that you got to go 
climb up to and you know that kind of stuff there's there's stuff like that there's an octorok to fight you know there's a uh yeah a korok puzzle um there's a go there's like um there's a hog you can go shoot or a deer there's a you know there's a couple of mushrooms you can go pick up or right there's a know. there's a tree that's got you know 10 apples on it yeah there every certain there's a certain like time period i don't know what it is but there's a certain time period and nintendo figured it out and they said once you reach that point there's got to be something there or else the player is going to lose interest and uh like think about when you leave the shrine of resurrection and you're walking down to the tower to activate the tower yeah which is the first objective you're going from point a to point b which is the shrine of resurrection to the tower think about all the stuff that's on the way just from that little jaunt over there you've got I mean, you've got there's mushrooms, you've got tree seeds, branches, there's you've got mushrooms, there's tree branches, there's you've got enemies, a sword. Goblins. There's the old man. There's the temple of time. I was gonna say there's, there's the temple of time. There's ruins. There's goblins. There's ch- there's even a chest if you go off the beaten path a little bit. There's um, yeah, goblins. Your first fight, your second fight, your third fight. There's choo choos that'll just pop out of the ground to come fight you, or fall out of a tree to come fight you. I mean, it's like every couple of seconds something new is happening. Right. To grab your eye. Right. And Wind Waker, they le- I think they learned that from Wind Waker, where they said, "Man, there's a lot, there's a, a lot of space and not a lot of stuff." Yes. And so people lost interest, and so I, I that's why that's what I'm trying to say is they they kind of figured that out. Even you can look at Twilight Princess, which was the next game that came after that, and there are enemies scattered across. Yeah. I, yeah, and there's stuff to do. Like, there's a hidden cave here. There's a there's a golden, there's a golden bug. bug. Yep, there there's you go. a you know there's a chest with a rupee. Sure, there's, there's a heart piece. Um, yeah, there's an archer with a bokoblin archer. There's a uh, horseback enemies. There's um, there's birds. The vultures. You know, eventually, eventually night is gonna fall, and then you're gonna yeah vultures. Eventually night is gonna fall, and then you're gonna get some other enemies. Um, you're gonna get you know those like spinning enemies in some of the areas of the map um you know on your way from the bottom of kakariko village to goron mines in twilight princess mm-hmm. when you're like scaling elden's mountains yep there's something going on it feels like every 10 seconds where you know there's a goron ro- rolling you. towards you yeah or there's like you know, a spot where you have to use the iron boots or, you know, to get past a geyser. There's a, there might be like a, like a grate that you have to climb up. Yeah. There's some enemies you, know, you gotta kill. Enemies you gotta kill with bow and arrow. There's stuff where like you'll have. There's um, a howling stone on the way. There's a how Yeah. There's a howling stone. There's, you get my point. Yeah. When they learned their lesson from Wind Waker about that issue that you're addressing. Yeah, they and did. They're saying. They're saying that you know, every couple every couple of steps, there needs to be something that's going on. It, I don't know how much it is. Maybe it's like every thirty seconds. Maybe it's every minute. I don't know what it is. But if you're going from point A to point B, you need to have something along the way that's that you can actually play. Yes. Rather than just get up and go to the bathroom. Yes. Yes. So they yeah. learned, but that does not does not remove the fact that it was still a problem. So I agree with you. So I that is you. like my biggest flaw with the game. The single biggest sure. flaw with the game. Um, my second, it's not really a flaw. It's just personal preference. Uh, there are not that many temples in the game. How many are there? Um, five or less. I'm going to say there's like five. Yeah. I'm going to say there's like five. I can really only remember two if I'm being honest. I can really only remember two. How many dungeons? Can't yeah, spell dungeons in Wind Waker. I mean, you tell me. What well, do you think? That looks a lot like a lot more than like two. 
I mean, do some of the are some of these like mini dungeons. Like, is the Forsaken Fortress a mini dungeon? So the Forsaken really Fortress is a place where you return to time and time again. It's a lot like the Temple of the Ocean King. Yeah, um, I think the Temple of the Ocean King did it better, actually. I agree entirely. Um, Dragon Roost. But do you Island... think it counts? Do you think Forsaken Fortress counts as a dungeon? I guess so. You could count know. it, but I wouldn't. Dragon Roost Cavern definitely counts. Yes, Dragon Roost counts. Um, so Forbidden, Forbidden Woods, Woods counts. Tower, Tower of the, of the Gods. Gods is also like, um, it's also like the Temple of the, Temple Ocean, of the Ocean King. King. You come back to that several times. Mm, well, only for like the major quests that you do there. Yeah, yeah. You go it's back there like, like two or three times. It's not like five. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you're you're going to it right before here and right before here and right yeah, before here. Yeah, you you're only going to like two yeah. or three times, but it's still a recurring one. Okay. Um, and then you have the Earth Temple, the Wind Temple, and then Ganon's Tower, which is where you fight Ganondorf. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the I only ones that the I Savage remembered. Labyrinth is. I don't know what that is. It's a mini dungeon. I see. Fifty floors. I think oh, it's that's the Cave the, of Trials. That's the Cave of Ordeals. Yeah. I see. Um. The only temples that I remembered were the Forbidden Woods and the Tower of the Gods. Yeah, see, I remembered the Dragon Roost one with the dragon. I remembered the Earth Temple and the Wind Temple. I don't remember either of these. Yeah, those in those two temples, that's where you go power up the Master Sword. Sure, sure. That's... And I guess I remember Underwater Hyrule Castle. Yeah, I remember that as well. But but I wasn't really thinking about that as a dungeon. I'll go, I, I guess it... Many of them. Uh, it's more of just a playable area, really. Yeah, so the game is is lacking in places that I would consider to be dungeons slash temples. I call I call them temple. Yep. It's lacking in places that I would call a temple. You know. Yeah. I I used to call them temples, but D and D and Skyrim have made me start calling them dungeons. So I see. I have um, my lingo's kind of changed over time. I see. I understand. Uh, yeah. So. Those are my two main gripes. Um, everything else, I like the weapons, you know, the items. Um, I like the animations. I like the graphics. I like the story. I love the music. I agree with like 95% of the things that you had said. So there's not much more for me to add. I did want to add the music though. The music is great. Yeah, the music's pretty good. A Dragon Roost Island. Yeah. Um, I think the main ocean theme. Which is fantastic. Da -da, da -da -da -da. Yeah, which is fantastic. Very, uh, very adventurous. Yeah, it was very good. Um, I'm going to put this game in A tier. Okay, where in A tier? I'm thinking about it right now. I think I will put it where it is. I think I'll put it where it is. You think this is better than Tears of the Kingdom? Um, or worse than Tears of the Kingdom? I do. I do. I think Tears of the Kingdom is a better game. Okay. And I think Skyward Sword is a better game as well. You know, you like Skyward Sword a lot more than you like Wind Waker. I do. You talk about it more. Yeah, I like Skyward Sword a lot. I like Wind Waker a lot, too. That's true. But you talk to me about Skyward Sword more often than you talk about Wind Waker. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's because you like that game more. I think you're probably right. That's probably why it's like that on my list. <laughs> Dude, I am so sure Majora's Mask is going to be my silver medal. Oh, for sure. I, I have no questions about it. There, there's no doubt yeah. in my mind. Yeah. There's no doubt in my All mind. All right. Four left. Four more to go. I'm really hoping Breath of the Wild is dead last. Link's Awakening. Switch. Remake. Yeah. yeah. You want to go ahead? Sure. I played it. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. I liked the animation change. Uh, the game ran very smoothly. Uh, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was good. It's your basic 2D Zelda game, so I'm putting it in C tier. Fair enough. I think when I I haven't played it, I think when I do end up playing it, I'm going to put it in C tier as well. Potentially bottom of B tier, but probably C tier. I am expecting. That I'm gonna like Skyward Sword more than Link's Awakening. That's that's what I'm expecting. I would expect um, that too. But, yeah, I mean Skyward Sword's got a lot lot going for it. Um, so, but uh, so I'm gonna go put it in the unplayed. But I'm gonna put it 
third in the unplayed. I want to play this one more than Adventure of Link. Fair. Uh, this game is enticing. Maybe it's because of the marketing recently, um, but uh, it just seems charming. It's it like is. a charming game. It is. It's a fun little game. It's it, it, it's a fun little game. Dude, I'm holding out breath of the wild. Please be last. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's gonna be. <laughs> it's either last or second to last. Four swords. Four swords. I have not played Four Swords. Um, between Four Swords and Four Swords Adventures, I'd rather play Four Swords Adventures because it has a longer name and seems like it's a more refined game, but I don't know because I haven't played either of them. So I'm actually going to put it... I, so, I also know that this game is a DLC, technically. Really? For, well, well, it's kind of, Let me pull up the history. Four, four Swords... Yeah, it's released alongside A Link to the Past. Oh, I see. As a package, as a package known as A Link to the Past and Four Swords. And here's the here's the box art for it. Yeah, yeah. So it's literally like a DLC for A Link to the Past. So it's not. It's kind of like Link's, Link's crossbow training. Um, except canon. <laughs> right. So it's weird. Um. Anyway, I'm gonna put it at the bottom of the unplayed okay. below oracle of ages and seasons because i'm not really that interested um i'm more interested in Warswords adventures because it looks a little bit more polished even if you say it's like that was it but i mean four swords is probably a that was it kind of game as well okay all right uh so my turn i have played four swords um i played the gamecube remaster of the game I did not. Was actually. that on the like special four games in one? No, it was his own disc. It was oh, own okay. thing. I rented it from Blockbuster. Oh, that <laughs> so, tells you when you did this. Yeah, so I never, uh, I, I I never beat it. I don't remember much about it, but I do remember having fun with it. So take that for what it is. I remember having more fun with this than I did with Sword Four Swords Adventures. Okay. Um, so I would probably put this above Hyrule Warriors and Link's Awakening in the have not played list. Okay. Um, I would play it. I remember having fun playing it. And that's pretty much all I remember about it. There you go. So, yeah, there you go. All right. All right. 50-50 shot. Please. 50-50 shot. Please. 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 Oh! <laughs> Can we do it anyway? Can we do League Between Worlds first anyway? Yeah, of course. We're in charge. Yeah, we're in charge. We'll, we'll just keep spinning until oh. we get it. You know what? Fair. I, you're a man of talent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> let's spin again. Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. For sure. For sure. It, it, there's no we way it'll so be. We got so close. We, we got so close to having it being last, we might as well just make it last. There, there we, go. we go. All right. Yeah, see, this was the real one. The other two you saw were practice spins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, Link Between Worlds. Look at that big ass. Did you see that font? Boom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have not played Link Between Worlds and uh, probably not going to get around to it. That being said, I like the premise of the game. I like the idea that you're painting. That's novel. It's it's different. Uh, I'm going to put this uh, right here, right before Age of Calamity, Ooh, right wait, behind Link to screen. the Past. Okay, go ahead. Do oh, sorry. Know. I put it right here. I put it right okay. smack in the middle of unplayed. Okay. Smack in the middle. Five ahead, five behind. All right, there you uh, go. It's, it's canon. It's so similar to A Link to the Past uh, and is a um, a spiritual successor that, you know, it, it ties a lot. But if I haven't played A Link to the Past, I probably need to play it first before I play A Link, to, Link Between Worlds. I think that's a good idea. In order to kind of understand in order to understand the kind of the cultural spiritual successor here. Yeah, I think so, that would be a good move. I think it yeah, would be more so, impactful. I agree. So that's where I'm putting it. Okay. You've right. played Link Between Worlds. I have ooh, I have played a Link Between Worlds. Um I either don't remember much about it, which is true, um but I don't remember it being all that good. Um okay. 
Like, like at all? Like, I, I have absolutely no desire to play it again. Okay. Like, none whatsoever. So, I mean, I don't... I, I and, and this is going to be a controversial move right here. Are you going to F tier? I'm putting it in F tier. Um, Are you gonna, what about D tier? What about D tier? Your D tier is looking a little empty. Well, that's okay. And I know Breath of the Wild is not going to D tier. Correct. Breath of the Wild will not be going to D tier. I would rather... You might need to... Um. No, but it is a real game. All right, I'll put it in D tier. All right, there you go. All right, it is a real game, and I had I, I had to think about it. Would I rather actually play crossbow training or Link Between Worlds? I'd rather play Link Between Worlds. I have it. I could literally go play it right now. It's downstairs on my 3ds. I have it. I I'll have do it. I have the cartridge. Uh, I won't. Uh, I don't remember <laughs> anything about it. I don't it. want you to. Um, I do remember having the wall mechanic where you're a painting. Yep. That was very interesting. Uh, yep. That's all I remember about it. Yep. Um, so, yeah. I, 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 I remember Spirit Tracks more than I remember Link Between Worlds. So, all right. So, there you go. All right. Last one. Oh, dude, landing right side up? That was good. That's actually pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Breath of the Wild. Apart from that little hiccup at the very end, I kind of like that it was last. Because, let's be real, just like Twilight Princess, we have been talking about this game all night. We have been talking about this game all day. We've been talking about, we talked about it the other day, too. We did. So, we got to talk about it now. We do. Um... Who wants to go first? I don't know. <laughs> I think I have uh, to go first because I think I think you went first on the other one. Well, we've kind of been playing fast and loose with who goes first on it. So if you want me to go first, I don't, I don't have a problem. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> two out of three, two out of three, two out of three. Two out of three? Okay. Yeah, yeah it's like flipping a, flipping a coin, you know? Two out of three. Two out of three on a coin flip? Yeah, you don't do two out of three on coin flips. I don't really need to. Oh, well, I do. First one usually right. does it. All right, you got you got one. Okay. And oh. you'll get both. It has been decided. Okay. You're the shell first. has spoken. That the Magicon shell has spoken. Yeah. All right. All right, you are going first on Breath of the Wild. All right. Okay. We, you and I have a lot of thoughts about this game. Mm -hmm. I think, I think if there is a game that takes the, what are we going to talk about the most? I think it's Twilight Princess. And then I think this is next. Yeah. We've I been talking about this right. game. We've been talking about this game all night. And yeah, we've been talking about it earlier because it was that money. It changed everything. Yeah. It's, it we already we already know we d I don't have to know what the next Zelda is, to know that it will be influenced by Breath of the Wild. For sure, in some I way. I don't need to. I yeah. I don't need to know what it is. I already know it's going to be influenced that way. Yes. It may be influenced by how open it is, and you can do the dungeons in any order. It may be influenced by weapon durability. It may be influenced by combat. It may be influenced by lore. It may be. I don't know. Right. It will be influenced. It will be. It will be different than what we used to see back in the 2000s and 2010s. Yeah. So, um, there were only two games in the 2010s. No, that's not true, the mobile games. Um, so, yeah. yep, yep, yep. this game, I think, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I am sure. This is the game I have spent the most time playing of all the Zeldas. I have put in... I'm going to check my... You switch? I'm gonna check my switch. Yeah, I got it right here. It's within arm's reach. Let's see. I have a friend online. It's you. Look at me. There I am. Profile. I have played Breath of the Wild on my main account for over 280 hours. That's it? Yeah. On my main account. Yeah, okay. On my second account... Let's do I else. have I have not here. linked it. I haven't linked it to a Nintendo account, so I don't know. Oh, so you don't know. 
If I were to guess, I'd probably say 150 hours. Okay, so we're looking at 430 hours. On my third account, I've probably played it an extra 60 hours. So we're looking at 400, we're looking at 500 hours. 500 hours, yeah. I ha- I definitely have played this more than any other game in the franchise. Definitely. Me too. 500 hours. Me too. Definitely. My Breath of the Wild on my main account is sitting at over 650. Yeah. Yeah. I have put and a I have lot played, of hours. And I've played on a few different accounts. I have 100% of this game. Uh, I've 100% of the game. I've played in master mode. Played. I played my original... Se- oh! How could I forget? I played my original game on your Switch. You did? Before I had an before I had a Nintendo account. You did. So there's hours from that too. And that account should be gone by now, should be deleted. So there's probably another thirty hours there. Four no, even more than that, because I you Oh my gosh. Week. Yeah, I probably put forty hours into it. So we'll just go ahead and say five to six hundred, whatever the number is. Sure. Like it's just and I've pl- I have put, I don't know, six or seven different playthroughs of this game under my belt. I've played, I've re- this game has really high. I've played high... on other people's Switches. Yeah, this game has really high replayability. It does. The highest in the franchise. I agree. It's, it's so easy to pick back up. It's so easy to start, get started again. I think about different challenge runs for this game every year. I think of a new challenge run to play. Really? Every every year. I was just thinking about the challenge run you did where you did the no pause run. Yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking about that one the other day. Yeah, I did I did one where no D pad plus minus. Yeah. Yeah, no plus minus or D pad. Um How did you was... beat the game? Bro. I will there I was inspired by a YouTube video. Which I will show you if you're interested sometime. Um, no pause. So plus minus, no pausing, no D pad. Yeah. That's crazy. It was awesome, dude. That sounds. It. Are you allowed to pause to like save the game? Yeah, I could press the home button. Well, that's. That's. Oh, you mean like to save the game? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I had to rely on auto saves. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. So when you wanted to stop, you had to go somewhere. You had to run there. Uh, I didn't have to stop that often. Uh, well, let me try that again. The auto save really wasn't a big deal for me. Really? No, not really. Okay. I mean, it auto saves the game auto saves so much so frequently that, and I was playing on normal mode, so okay. I had a lot of options yeah, if yeah, I needed yeah. to backtrack. Gotcha. So. Yeah. But you weren't allowed to backtrack. Um, you what do you mean? Allowed, you weren't allowed to open the menu to backtrack. No, but I could close app and reload the app if I needed to. I see. Okay, gotcha. If I needed to... The, the, the biggest you, trick you, of the whole run... You had to save your gobble gums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you close app and you come back in, then you're back on the main menu and you can pick your auto save. Yeah, yeah, okay. That you want. Uh, the biggest trick of the run was if you wanted to change your clothes, you had to go to the dye shop in Hateno, and you could talk to the guy and tell him you wanted to dye your clothes, uh-huh. and you could be like, and you could be like, um, okay, you're ready to dye, and he's like, do you want to? Is that what you want to? Is that the outfit you want to wear to dye your clothes, or do you want to change your outfit? And you're like, I want to change my outfit, and it'll pull up the menu without having to press the button, and um, it will let you change your clothes. Yeah, and it'll let you change your clothes, and then you could back out and be like, never mind, I don't want to dye my clothes. And he's like, okay. And then you walk out with the clothes you swapped to. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. So that's how I, I was able to I probably to would get... have done the game in the old shirt and the old pants. It, well, you can't put on the old shirt and the old pants. <gasps> You're right. I would have done the game naked. You would have. Yeah. I would have beaten it naked if I were to yeah. attempt this. Wow, I would have beaten it naked. Yeah. I never, I I never I knew about that. I would have told you this. I would have told you this after you did the run, and you'd have been like, "That is so brain." That's huge brain. <laughs> yeah. That's huge brain. Yeah. Wow. Another thing I had to think about very carefully was the runes. If you can't have the T pad, you can't swap runes. Correct. So, 
when whatever rune you leave the great plateau with is the rune you're gonna have for the yeah game. what'd you pick i'll tell you uh before i tell you though the it, it is important to know that this game that that run would not be possible except for the fact that when you go up to the terminals in the four shrines and you upload a rune or you download a rune it auto equips yeah yeah so you don't have to met you have to you don't have to press the menu or the d-pad you yeah, have to press the d-pad they'll, they'll to automatically do it, it for the one that you need for that shrine that's correct it'll yeah. as soon as you, once you download it it auto auto equips yeah yeah so oh you better never uh, get I, the camera yeah i never did you, I never you did can't get the camera. <laughs> actually that's not true i did later on um in order to do the memories because you need the camera rune in order to get the memories did the camera change it to the camera? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you were yeah. stuck on the camera at that point. Yeah, but that was intentional. Right. Although, when I did that, I regretted it later because it didn't feel like I was ready. Um, the, I had decided early on that when I, when I was going to switch to the camera to do all the memories, I was going to do all the memories all in one session. Sure. Um, and then I was going to prepare for the final boss, but I I was going to prepare for Ganondorf or Ganon, but I was not, I didn't feel ready for that. And so I regretted it later. Um, at the Hiteno Tech Lab, you can upgrade your bombs and you can upgrade yeah. your stasis and doing they'll, they'll change either of those that will auto equip one of those. Yeah. So I ended up uh, in order to, going into Hyrule Castle I upgraded bombs at Hateno Tech Lab in order to auto equip bombs from the camera. Um okay. after I had after I had done all of the memories. Yeah. Um so I could get the true ending. Yeah. And the um but I left the Great Plateau with Magnesis. That's the one I left with. That's what I would have picked. Um yeah. Cryonis was a waste of a slot. For um, sure. Bombs I mean, if I needed an explosive, I could just use bomb arrows. Um, by the way, switching to arrow, switching arrow types was not an easy task. Yeah, I was gonna say, how do how can you switch to bomb arrows? Uh, they auto equip if you are. They they can auto equip under certain circumstances, which I'll talk about in a second. See this this challenge run. See, talk about how complex this challenge run is. This is extremely but fact, complex. But the fact that the game would let you do this i don't think twilight princess would let you beat the game with no menus um i, I don't think, think it you're be right done. you can't do it because you have to change to wolf link yeah to wolf link you have to change into the zora armor several times yeah you couldn't do it um and it doesn't auto it equip it as far as i know yeah ocarina of time forget about it oh forget it forget it you have to menu for that correct game. you can't ever um, do it but the fact that Breath of the Wild, it's possible to beat the game without menuing, wow. which I did. It's just a it's a testament to how adaptable the game is. Not just is for beat the game, but like get the true ending. I did. I know. Um, That's crazy. That you can not yeah, only dude. beat the game, but actually get the real ending. Yeah. Dude, the so I knew that in order to beat the game. I needed to defeat as many bosses as possible because without menuing, I can't go into the boss rush at the very end. I can only go in with one sword. Right. So it has to be the master sword. Correct. The problem with that is that if the master sword loses its charge and it breaks, I can't recharge it and get it back in my hand. It won't. It's, it's permanently stuck in the menu. It won't. Which means... Which means... What are you talking about? The Master Sword in the... In the in the, in the boss fights. Mm -hmm. In the Hyrule Castle ones, when like, you don't do the, 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 the Vine Beasts. Yep. It does not break. Yes. I did that in, problem... my, uh, in, in my yep. Master Sword only run. Yeah, but... See, you did a challenge run of this game, too. Oh, I've done the several. Problem, the problem with that line of thinking though is that if i get it early if i get the master sword before i'm ready oh that's well, the weapon yeah, i have yeah. to use yeah you're stuck and then you you can't you'll be stuck yeah if i have to fight if i have to fight a moblin in the middle of a say, recharge 
Yeah, if I have to fight, let's say for example, I have to fight all the Zalfos in Farron Woods, uh, over on the bottom right of the map. Sure. If I if I have to fight all the Zalfos over there and I have the Master Sword, I have to use the Master Sword. Yeah. And if the Master Sword breaks during that fight, I can't use the Master Sword at the end of the game. Ever. Because yeah. I have to I have to re-equip it and I can't do that without menuing. Right. Which means that once I grab the master sword because the master sword is the only weapon that will have the durability to last through the whole boss rush yeah yeah once i grab the master sword i have to rush to the end sure yeah you can't so i have to be else. yeah so i have to be very careful to get the master sword at the right time which is when i'm ready for it did you have um, a shield uh i i really didn't have a problem getting shields there were enough of them around the map that whenever they broke i was able to get another one from a fallen enemy the real the real thing that I struggled to get right was... right because you pick it up and it auto equips, yeah 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 yeah. The real thing that I struggled to get was I struggled to get weapons at the right time. Um, that I believe. Yeah, most of the most of the time I'd have a weapon, and I'd be using it, and, and it, it would, would break, break in a in a fight, and then I and you're left with would have to yeah I would have to figure something else out. I'd have to use arrows if I had arrows. Or I'd have to pick up a weapon from an enemy I had previously killed or was laying around a monster camp or whatever. Right. Um, but if I didn't have any of those resources, like if it was just like a moblin by himself and I was a 1v1 and my sword broke, I just had to run away. Yeah, you just had if to I leave. Didn't have a, if, if I didn't have a bow and arrow. Yeah, you um, just had to leave. Yeah, I just had to bounce. So, you know, there was a lot of running away in that in that situation i'm sure and i didn't and of, and of course i didn't have bombs i had magnesis right um because there was dude i learned that there is so much cheese with magnesis there is really? so much yes there is so much cheese with magnesis you could have used dude. magnesis to kill everybody sometimes if you had like you could have brought uh, a door with you a big heavy heavy metal door and just slammed it on people's heads yeah, but something. But I'm not gonna carry a sword, a, a door around everywhere I go, and sometimes I just can't. Sure. Um, when it comes to uh, dungeons, I was able to do one dungeon, and that was Rivali's Gale. I was gonna say it was had to be Birdman. Yeah, I had. To, I was able to do Birdman because because the problem is, uh, the other three dungeons start. Because I can't um, use the menu, I can't, you can't shift the dungeon. The, yeah, you can't change it. Yeah, I can't. I can't change the dungeon. And uh, in each of those other three dungeons, there's at least one terminal where it doesn't start at right. a ninety degree. It doesn't start flat. Right, it's upside down and, or something. Yeah, and so I can't interact with it. Right, so then you're, um, just, you're screwed. Right, but the but Birdman, uh, all four of them start five of them flat flat whatever the count was yeah and so uh and so i was able to do it using glitches and cheese oh yeah uh yeah there you go yeah I, it would not be possible without uh cheese from magnesis um in fact one of the terminals you can't uh you can get to the terminal but you can't get back so you just have to just like jump off the cliff. Fall. You have to jump off the cliff and get a game over and respawn at the start. So um, yeah, yeah, that's fine. But I didn't have to. I didn't have to face wind blight in the uh, in the boss rush. I did that, and, and it had an eighth of his health was missing. So oh, calamity. That's candidate. interesting. Yeah, you know? I've never gone in without killing all four of them. I did not know that would happen. Well. Uh, for every, if you defeat all four bosses, then Calamity Ganon will have one h half of his health removed. Yeah, yeah. And so for each, if you don't kill all four bosses, then you get a quarter of the removal for each health. Yeah. Or for each uh, boss. So in total, if you kill one, that'd be one eighth of his total health. Bar yeah, I've removed. never killed just one. Or I've right. only ever killed all four, so I did not know that would happen I, honestly i didn't even know the laser would fire if it wasn't all four of them uh, it fires it just fires one of them yeah i didn't know that i yeah. learned something new about breath of the wild today dude 
This game just keeps on giving. It seriously did. Wow, I did not know that. How did you How did you end up switching arrows? Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. Um, so it does auto equip. The way that it auto equips is you have to be whatever the arrow type you're currently on. Let's say for example you're on fire arrows. It has to be completely out of fire arrows if you want to switch to a new arrow type. You have to be completely out of fire arrows. And then, once you're out of fire arrows, you have to find a chest somewhere in the world that will give you the arrow type you're trying to switch to. And then it'll auto-equip. And then it'll auto-equip. So in my Got it. case, so uh, an example that I used was I wanted to go into the final fight using ancient arrows. And so I stocked so you... up on ancient arrows at the Akala Tech Lab. Right? Okay. At yeah. the, with Robbie. And then in Hyrule Castle, on one of the balconies, there was a chest for ancient arrows. Yeah, I think there's two of them so, in Hyrule Castle. There you go. So at some point prior to that, I timed my bow with... I, I timed my bow's durability with the last arrow that I had. Yeah. Until the final arrow that I shot would break the bow. Completely went out, would break the bow. And then I went back to Birdman and I got the Great Eagle bow. Good plan. And then I took the Great Good Eagle plan. bow and then I went Yeah, and then I went to um the Tech Lab. And then I went to the, or not the No, I well I already had the Tech I already had the Ancient Arrows. I took the Great Eagle bow and then I went to Hyrule Castle where I then took the I, one in the um, chest. Op I opened the chest and then I auto equipped the Ancient Arrows to the Great Eagle bow. Wow. And that's this that's run... the setup I this run is humongous brain. It required a lot of thought. This is a humongous It required a lot brain. of planning. Yeah. And because you can't menu, you can't fast travel. So if I wanted to go around the map, I had to use the horse. Right. Or, or your legs. But yeah. Well, the, uh, you think I'm running from Hateno Tech Lab to Birdman? I can't imagine that you would. I would. I, no, I, would. I am not you. But I, yeah, dude, you're not it was me. like a 15, it was like a 20 minute jaunt. On the horse. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I it's still burned into my memory. I had to I I horsebacked everywhere in that uh, game. I, I'm sure you did. Uh, it's the only during that challenge run. Do it. It was it was fun, man. It was really fun. To, oh, and to... you're not allowed to use the D-pad, so you can't whistle for your horse. That's true. So you had to get a new one every time. No, I didn't have to get a new one. Oh, yeah, I guess once you've tamed it, he doesn't run away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I could just put him in a stable when I was done with him. Yeah, yeah. If there happened to be a stable nearby where I was at. Right. Otherwise, just park him. Yeah, dude. And, um... Yeah. It was, uh... That was a really fun challenge. <laughs> Hard, man. It it's, sounds it's, like uh, it was really tough. It required a lot of planning. The shrines... Um, there you were some, there select. were, yeah, I had, I you had to be really choosy with the shrines. Of course, the ultimate goal was to get enough hearts to get the master sword. Right. Um, and so I had to pick and choose which shrines I would go. Cause some shrines I wouldn't be able to finish and I'd have to leave close app. Yeah. If I, if I couldn't, well, most of them, you could just walk back out and that's usually not an issue, but there are some, there were a couple, I want to say maybe like three or four where You'd I couldn't get back. Yeah, and so I had to close app and uh, reload to right when I joined, when, right when I spawned into the shrine, and then just walk back out the elevator. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're not really here to talk about a, one particular challenge run I did like three years ago. No, but it's um, still interesting. Yeah, it is. It was pretty fun. Um, but this game has so much content. It was it it, it just revolutionized this franchise. There's an I gave it. Right I I think it gave fresh air, a new life to the to the franchise. Um, this game will be a staple for this franchise. I think this game surpasses Ocarina of Time in terms of quality, not in terms of music, but in terms of quality, in terms of gameplay, in terms of stuff to do. This game had four dungeons and 120 shrines, plus side quests, 900 Koroks. 900 Koroks. Oh, I didn't like that. <laughs> Me neither. I looked up a guide. I did, did it the twice. 900 Korok seeds. So I don't I. envy you. I don't envy me. Yeah. I think this is better than Ocarina of Time. At least it is to me. 
fair. I mean, it's so that's a bold claim. Some people are gonna have some backlash on that. You know what? Let them come. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I'm putting this in S tier. I completely agree. Um, you know, I, and my reasoning for putting it in S tier, uh, for the list of reasons that you have already said, but also for the fact that uh, earlier today, we were talking about how, um, it is how Twilight Princess is that game that we will compare other games to. And how, when we make a comparison to it, you know, did it do it better than Twilight Princess? Is right. this better than Twilight Princess? We always ran that comparison. Well, Breath of the Wild has its own comparison as well. I mean, today, you and I, just today alone, while making this list, you and I have made comparisons to Breath of the Wild time and time again. Yes. Time and time again. Yes. And so, with that... Just by that sole fact, it has to be one of the tops in S tier. I think the fact that we're comparing it makes this game a measuring stick for the rest of the games. It, Does yeah. it measure up to what Breath of the Wild did? For sure. For sure. And I, I said it earlier, you know, if Tears of the Kingdom came out first, we would think so highly of it instead of Breath of the Wild. But... That doesn't change what actually happened in the real world. Breath of the Wild came first, and that's the way it is. Yeah. And and, and it, it is that way. You know, I have over a combined 850 hours in this game. Yeah. Across several different switches, several different have accounts. 600. Yeah. So, yeah, I have over 600 on my main account. Yeah. My main account. I have over 600. I mean, as much as I love Twilight Princess, I have not put 600 hours into Twilight not Princess. Not even close. Not even yeah. close. You can't do these challenges in Twilight Princess. You can't do yeah. these things in Ocarina of Time. Breath of the Wild gives you... You can't even... We, you know, Breath of the Wild's open world is compared to the original Legend of Zelda. You can't do these things in the original Legend of Zelda. You will get bodied by the enemies. And yeah. you will, you, you, can it be done? Probably. Can 99.9% .9 of the player base do it? No. But I'll say 80% of the player base could complete a Breath of the Wild challenge. Whether they created it, whether it's something ridiculous like yours, or you know, something that's well known, three heart runs. We've done those. Right, that one's a popular one. Right, that's a popular one. Been there, done that. You could do a three right. You could do a three hard run of Breath of the Wild. You got to be careful around those guardians. For sure, you can. Um, it's and Lionels and stuff. It will be hard. Can you do it? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, you can. Uh, but Technically, think... I'm doing a three hard run right now because I only have three hearts. There you go. And then, yep. There you go. So, uh, it... Breath of the Wild, I think, is just it's it will be the game. That everything it will be the new it will be the ocarina of time of today's world. The modern yeah, of the modern Zeldas. It will be yeah. the ocarina of time of the modern Zeldas. Every game will get compared to it. Every one of them. Every single one. In fact, I can already tell you every game that I have played post Breath of the Wild that has been made post Breath of the Wild has had some Breath of the Wild in it. Every even single the Link's game. Awakening, even I've, in the snippets I've seen of the Link's Awakening remake, the menuing is largely the same. Uh, yes. Echoes of Wisdom too. Yes, Echoes of Wisdom has ha has got so much from Breath of the Wild. Yeah, it does. I mean, Breath of the Wild set the new standard of the modern era, and it has to have that respect. Yeah, it has to have that respect. So I'm putting it in S tier. Um, I don't know that I'm comfortable putting it at the bottom of S tier. I'm I, with you there. I think I might have to put it at number two. Part of me wants to put it at number one because of just, yeah, the gold medal. Yeah, just how revolutionary it was and still is today. I mean, you played... When's the last time you played Breath of the Wild? When was the last time I played Breath of the Wild? Yeah, when's the last time you played Breath of the Wild? Oh, like three weeks ago. See? 
Just just this month, you play Breath of the Wild. Now yeah, I, I have played I have played Breath of the Wild in November. There you go. See, I haven't played Breath of the Wild since the Road to Tears of the Kingdom. Sure. Uh, does yeah, that it's mean been a while. it's it's been a while? But does that mean I haven't thought about it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I told you just Dude, the, I told you just the other Breath day. I was thinking about your no pause run. Just the yeah. other day, I was thinking about it. You were thinking about my no pause run the other day? Yeah, yeah, I told you. I told you when that's how we got started talking Dude, about your you no should, pause run. Maybe you should try a no pause run. See, I was thinking about it just the other day. And oh, you, you like, heard me do it and you were like, that sounds pretty good? No, I was thinking about Breath of the Wild and I was thinking about how you did this no pause run and I was thinking about how is that even possible? Because, like, how are you even going to be able to, like, change runes and, like, how are you even going to be able to do this? And I got thinking about it for about 10 minutes. And I was like, you know, that's interesting. That's that that is that's interesting. And there I was thinking about Breath of the Wild. I mean, this was within the past seven days, right? Like this might have been three days ago. Like I was sitting there thinking. Dude, about I appreciate it. you were thinking about me three days ago. Like I was thinking about it, and I'm just like, like how is that even possible? And now here here we are. You've now explained it, and I and I'm just in awe at the giant brain. Like I did not I did not come up with most of that stuff. I got most of it from the YouTube video well, that inspired me to do it. Well, whoever came up with it, their genius generates gravity. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> will, after this, when we when we wrap up the video here, uh, we can watch that video together. Okay. And uh, and post game. Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah. That that person's genius generates gravity, and I think Breath of the Wild. Look, I can say a lot of great things about Breath of the Wild. I can also say a lot of bad things about Breath of the Wild. Things that I Wait, don't the dungeons like. are the elephant in the room. Right, we can talk about the the temples. They are just not they're not up to standard. Yeah, the lack of NPCs for a game world this big to have virtually no NPCs. Now, are there NPCs? Yes, there are NPCs. Yeah, I mean, I get they're it. They're out there. I actually, I'm okay with the the lack of NPCs out in the world and how they're all in their own cities. I'm okay with that because you yeah. know they their whole universe has been demolished for a hundred years and they found safety. No, I, I I get that you can find NPCs only in or pretty much only in the towns. I get that. But like Skyward Sword, for example, has Groose. It has <laughs> It does have Groose. It has it has Groose, it has Fi, it has uh, there were some of those mole guys and they were yeah. charming. Yeah. They were like they were cool. They had a goofy little theme. Right, you had... And, and um, you, what you're saying is none of those guys were in Breath of the Wild. Yeah, there was there were no characters that were like that in Breath of the Wild. I think the most interesting characters I can think of from Breath of the Wild was... Beetle? In... Beetle did not have the same personality he did in other games. That's true, he did not. But I still Skyward think... Skyward Sword Beetle is so much better. Oh, Skyward Sword Beetle is the best one. You have... Oh! <laughs> Hot. Hot. <laughs> you have the uh in the Drudo desert in the Karakara oh. Bazaar when you get the clothes from the crossdresser guy. Sure. That's probably the most notable character. And then you have Gimme Those Boots dude. See, I was uh, thinking yeah, Gimme Those Boots dude, obviously. But I was also gonna say uh Cass. Cass is pretty good. Cass. Have... I think Cass is probably <sighs> bless you. I you think... have Sidon. Yeah, Nifa. right. You have the you have the heroes, right? Those are NPCs. You have the heroes, but I think just as a regular person, I think probably Beetle and Cass are probably the top two. Immediately followed by Give Me Those Boots. Yeah, like I'm comparing. I I'm just gonna keep going with Skyward Sword here. Like I'm comparing the standard NPCs, the standard like not the special ones sure yeah obviously you know there's people like Groose and line back in uh right the king know, of red lions the king of red yeah there's there's the special npcs but then you have like the mundane npcs like mallow like yeah you have um you know uh milan's dad talon from lon lon talon from lon lon ranch yeah you have um the kid, not going back to Ocarina of Time, the guy who like won't let you through to go see the Deku tree until you get some stuff. Yeah. What about Malin herself? 
Well, Malamo's... Yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say she's a little bit more in the special NPC category. But... A little bit. I'd say only because she has a side quest a little bit. Okay. But um, I, I would put her as a regular NPC. Okay. Saria? Saria, although she is special, but yeah. Um, Let's see, what else? Uh, going over to, say... um, Let's think of a game here. What about the Happy Mask Salesman? Happy Mask Salesman, now, sure. Now that's a guy. Yeah. Going over to Twilight Princess, uh, back again. Uh, the chief of the, the Kakariko. Gorons? Oh. You have, well, yeah, sure, the chief of the Kakariko. You have the bomb guy from the bomb shop. Yeah, what a great guy. Yeah. Like. Yeah, you're right. Breath of the Wild, did, the NPCs had no personality in Breath of the Wild. Yeah, you have uh, in Twilight Princess. You have the head of Ordon Village who you, teaches you how to sumo wrestle. Yeah, he's got personality. Yeah, they all have. Uh, there's so much. All of the games prior to Breath of the Wild. What have about a the, lot of characters? What about the Yeti? You have the Yeti, of course. And the, the Yeti's Yeti? wife was a the Yeti's wife was a boss. She was. Dude, Tears of the Kingdom. So long. Yes, I was going to pick him from Tears of the Kingdom. I was going to say, that guy right there? Absolutely. What's his name? I don't know. Uh, Tears it's not cast. of the Kingdom. No, it's not cast. Elekin. Let's switch to this. Uh... I think his name is Fly in it. Pen. That's his name. Pen. Pen. It did not have Fly in it. He's a journalist. He is. Yeah, of course, there you his go. name is Pen. Yep. Um... That's a creative character. Right, and, and he was not in Breath of the Wild. No, he wasn't. He came later. Yeah. Sidon has a girlfriend. Sidon has um, a girlfriend? Like, where did she come from? Yeah. Right? Uh, it she seems came, like she came from, like... She came from somewhere else. Yeah, it seems like she came from, like, the Saltwater Zoras. She, yeah, she, she didn't even come from like, Hyrule. And I'm over here like, I didn't even know there were Saltwater Zoras. I thought right. they were all freshwater. <laughs> right, like, she's bringing in some lore here that we've never heard of. She's like, oh, I came from... You know, outside of Hyrule, and we're like, excuse Literally not me? not on the map. Not on the map. She's, she drops that line, by the way, I came from outside of Hyrule. Excuse me? What? Where? What do you mean? Where? where? Show me on the map. Show me right Chat. now. Chat who? Yeah, where? Where did you come from? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean there's something outside of Hyrule? You have... So the games before this had creative and colorful NPCs, and the game after this had colorful NPCs. But like but this of the game, Wild did not. I mean, Cass was probably the most colorful character here. He was, yeah, for sure. And but he was kind of in like major NPC status, not really minor NPC. The minor NPCs were really lacking in this game in terms. Yeah, of they were just guys. Like, you know who was a minor like, NPC who's who's familiar about the Wild? Who's that? The die shop guy. Yep. Yeah. He's probably yeah. the most notable minor NPC. Probably. The die shop um, guy. So here, so here's something to think about. Let me ask you a question. And I, I'm pretty sure the answer is going to be no. Do you know who the mayor of Hateno Village is in Breath of the Wild? Do you know which NPC that is? I could not walk up to him and say this is the mayor. That's what I'm. That's exactly what I'm talking about. But if I asked you, do you know who the mayor of Kakariko Village is in Twilight Princess? In a heartbeat. You, you would know exactly who to walk up In to. a heartbeat. That's what we're talking about. These NPCs are trash. I I literally... Maybe he... Does he wear a hat? Um, I think he does. Oh, maybe I do know him then. <laughs> but, you, but you're like not sure. Antenna Village... Right. I am not positive. I cannot no, say not, for sure. It's this guy. No, he does not wear a hat. He it's does not guy. wear a hat. I have no idea who that guy is. You have no idea who this is? No. Was he in Breath of the Wild? He was in Breath of the Wild, yes. No, I have no idea. Yeah, it's this guy right here. Not you have a clue. No clue. You don't know who this man is. Not a clue. Yeah. He had a whole quest. Well, he had a whole quest in Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. I have no idea who this him. guy is. Yeah, you don't know who this is. Me ever visiting. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, I have no um, idea who that is. So yeah, dude, it's just these NPCs are not memorable. Um, we yeah. mentioned one of the one of the one of the pros of Twilight Princess, which is why we gave it a gold medal, 
was the variability in the gameplay. How how different you could have gameplay with Tony Hawk, with snowboarding, with uh, fishing, with werewolf, with yeah, Spider Man. Yep. Uh, Breath of the Wild. You are. It is one gameplay mode. Uh, yeah. You now. I will say you can shield surf. True. So, so you can't That's snowboard. That's true. You can't. You can't snowboard. You can snowboard, but you can uh, kind of skateboard a little bit if you're willing to sacrifice durability. Right. But I mean, why would you ever do that? Right. Like. But. But sure, yeah. I have snowboarded down a mountain. I've done it. It's quick. But this game. This game is basically rock climbing simulator. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, there are times when I have literally decided this is where a, a, a meme comes from, from 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 my existence of playing Breath of the Wild is I will just go over it instead of going around it. Even though going There's... around it would be much faster and much easier. No, I'm going to go over it. Yeah. Why? Because I can. Yeah, you're pretty stubborn like that. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, you could go around this and save 10 minutes. I, yeah, I could. I won't. But I could. I, I want to get up there. I'm going up there. Guess what? I'm climbing. You're determined. <laughs> I'm going up. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, there were no NPCs. I'm, I'm quite happy putting this as my silver medal for now. Me too. And um, Even though I've played it by a lot more... It's, I don't know that, I mean, it's, it's just, I think there are too many things wrong with it. Music. Yeah, the Twilight Princess did not get enough things wrong to bump it out of gold medal. Right, music. Breath of the Wild, yeah, the music. There's no music in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. There's, like... Okay, fine. You get a lot more outfits in Breath of the Wild, but I, I mean, I'm not that jazzed about it. Me a lot of the times, I've if I'm wearing like, an outfit, I wore like two different pieces of clothing in the entire game. Yeah, hot and cold. Okay, I wore like four different pieces of clothing in the entire okay. game. Cold and like defense. Yeah, that was I, basically I, it. Yeah, I wore hot, cold, and uh, the best defense. That's it. Yep, and I didn't really wear hot. Hot unless I was in Gerudo or Elden. Yeah, same, same. And in fact, only, that's the only. At that point, I didn't even wear all three pieces. Yeah, Most you'd wear time. like I wore just two. the hat. I wore one or two, depending on you know the varying levels of degree. And that would be it. I always had on the champion's tunic. Yeah. Almost exclusively, always had it right. on. Right. So. Quite the mechanic there to have customization if we're not going to use it. Right. I mean, it's there. You can use it. Sure. I'm sure people use it. I don't. Yep. So, you know, we're, we're starting to list negatives here, and I think that's sufficient enough for me to justify this is not the gold medal. I but agree. But uh, there I... are so many positives that this is a silver medal. For sure. For sure. There is nothing wrong with coming in second. Yep. Nothing wrong with coming in second. In fact, you know what? I'm going to give it a gold medal, and I'm going to give Twilight Princess the platinum medal. Ooh, I like that. Platinum for that Twilight Princess. That way you Princess. can still give Majora's Mask the bronze. That's right. Gold for Breath of the Wild, silver for Ocarina, bronze for Majora's Mask. That's it. I'm done. Here's my tier list. That's, that's it. Done and done. I'm going to show yours now. That's your tier list. They are different. By a lot. They're very different. You only ranked like eleven I, games. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I'd, it's I'd okay. like to see where you. I'd like to see. Did you take away the games that you played that I didn't play, and let's just see the eleven games that we we both played? Okay. Uh, I was, I'd like to see. Uh, uh, you did not play a, a Link to the Past. Yep. So I'll move. You can that. put that in on deck. That's probably fine. Fan art glass. You played Zelda one, right? Uh, yes. Okay. You didn't play Link's Awakening. Correct. Spirit Tracks. You didn't play Link Between Worlds. You didn't play Crossbow Training. Uh, you didn't play Zelda 2. You didn't play Four Swords or Triforce Heroes. One, two, or Majora's three, Mask. Four, or Majora's Mask. Six, seven, eight, nine. What am I missing? Uh, it was nine. 
Nine is correct. Oh, yeah, it's nine? Okay. There you go. Our, our top three are the same. What's your what's your list look like? I have Twilight uh, Princess, Breath of the Wild, Ocarina. Yep. Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, Skyward Sword. Different there. I have, I have Wind Waker and then Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, I have Tears of the Kingdom, then Skyward Sword, and then Wind Waker. Yeah. And then Phantom Hourglass, then Zelda 1, and then Spirit Tracks. Yeah. So the top three are the same. Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, top three are the same. Yeah. Which is fitting for us because we have mostly the same opinions on a lot of these. We do. We do. I, I think, think our biggest difference biggest... is Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, well. well I'm, I'm happy with this. I yeah. think this is a... I, I think, think it's we a good did a good list. job. Both of both of our lists are pretty good. I think we did good. All right. All right then.